lovely, lovely imps. Today, we are going to be once again talking about shoe on head, who I sometimes refer to as blood on hands. Um, now, I've talked about shoe on this channel a number of times, and people have noted that in the past, I've been quite charitable to shoe on head, uh, despite having some pretty serious critiques. If you actually go back and watch some of my older videos about it, you'll see my full opinions. Um, and recently, I have become increasingly bothered by the type of behavior that shoe on head engages in. And this culminated with uh, a, a recent, let's call it a scandal, okay? We'll call it a scandal. There was a scandal, um, a, 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 a bunch of people got very angry at a fashion brand, a very high-end luxury fashion brand called Balenciaga. And uh, as it turns out, what people were getting angry at was a genuine uh, rabbit hole conspiracy theory uh, that ended up with um, that ended up with a lot of people jumping on board, including mainstream media. And this was primarily promoted and uh, and and boosted by shoe on head. And uh, this has sparked a lot of conversation. And and now actually, uh, shoe on head has uh, made a statement about the situation claiming that she was canceled, which is an interesting thing to claim. We'll get to that. Uh, and also that, uh, you know, a, a bunch of other things. Now, I haven't seen this video yet. We're reacting to it fresh the first time today. Um, I have heard some things about it, and I have seen a couple of less than five second snippets, as in like two or three different segments that people literally tweeted at me uh, or, or uh, uh, sent to me. And uh, I have a lot to say about this issue as a whole. But today, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna just react. Because I haven't seen the video. So I wanna give Shu a chance to, uh, uh, to, to, to lay out her case. Now, in the description of this video will be the first video I did on Shu. And uh, if you all are, are interested in finding out what I actually said about Shu, because I, I happen to know that Shu does uh, say some things about me in this video, which we'll get to. Um, but if you want to know what I actually said about Shu, if you actually want to see with your own eyes instead of having somebody sort of tell you what to think, go watch my video. Go check out my video on Shu on Head. Um, and if you do watch that, you will discover that I opened my video talking about moral panics. And I opened my video talking about how conspiracy-fueled pedo hunting is actually not a good thing, okay? So before we go any further into this video, before I even do my react, I wanna read you something, okay? And if you're listening to this now, I really, really, really want you to pay attention to this part, okay? Because we're gonna get into all the nitty gritty, we're gonna go through everything, we're gonna throw some images up on screen and look at all kinds of different stuff, but I wanna start this with the most important part, okay? This is an article called Freedom Needs Truth. This is a, uh, an article that was published on Medium. A coalition of organizations dedicated to fighting human trafficking are warning about the dangers posed by QAnon conspiracy theories. We're gonna read a little bit of this, okay? But I want you to understand what's going into this, okay? Because I take this issue incredibly seriously. I take allegations of child abuse very seriously. I take allegations of rape and sexual assault very seriously, okay? As you should too. These are not laughing matters. People get killed over stuff like this, okay? This organization is a coalition of well over a hundred or different organizations, all of which are Charities recognized by the United States government as anti-child trafficking charities or anti-sex trafficking charities. Together, they published a letter. All of them came together and signed this. And by the way, as we get to the end, I'm going to show you so that you can see with your own eyes. Because you see, Demon Mama is a streamer that cares about truth. Demon Mama is a streamer with a spine. And Demon Mama actually cares 
about the issues that she talks about. And I'm going to show you this list so you can see it with your own eyes, all right? An open letter to candidates, the media, political parties, and policymakers. As survivors, service providers, human and labor rights activists, law enforcement officials, researchers, and policy experts, we know human trafficking is real. For decades, we have worked to raise awareness, enforce the law with a victim-centered approach identify and aid survivors in their recovery, address underlying root causes, and establish policies to end this horrific crime. Our collective efforts have been aided by champions across the political spectrum. From Senator Sam Brownback and Paul Wellstone to Presidents George W. Bush and Barack Obama, a bipartisan message has been clear. You do not score political points on the back of human trafficking survivors, and you do not lie about human trafficking to scare voters. We are in this together. You do not lie about human trafficking to scare voters or to scare anyone. It is with this collective and collaborative history in mind that we say we are alarmed and deeply disturbed by the intentional spread of conspiracy theories and disinformation about sex trafficking, aiming to show, sow fear and division in order to influence upcoming elections. Anybody, political committee, pu public office holder, candidate, or media outlet who lends any credibility to QAnon conspiracies related to human trafficking actively harms the fight against human trafficking. Indeed, any political committee, candidate, public office holder, or media that does not expressly condemn QAnon and actively debunk the lies should be held accountable. Now, before we go any further, this is a letter that is written specifically about QAnon, but it is addressing things that stretch far beyond QAnon. In fact, letters just like this have been published about other specific conspiracies in the, fact, in the, in the past. And I want you to notice actively debunking the lies. Instead of actively propagating or silently condoning disinformation that harms trafficking victims and survivors and dismantles years of bipartisan cooperation, we offer real facts about human trafficking. Here we go. The majority of trafficked youth have been abused or neglected, have run away or do not have stable housing, or are in immigrant or are immigrant children fleeing violence in their home country to seek refuge in the United States. They are the youth that we as a society have failed. They are not abducted by random strangers or Hollywood elites. They are abandoned by failing and under-resourced systems. There is not a deep state cabal of democratic politicians and Hollywood celebrities who traffic children for sex. No major political candidate or party supports or condones pedophilia or human trafficking. Notice, mind you, that this does not say that there are not anyone involved in positions of power who do not engage in child sex trafficking. There absolutely are. They do not say that. But what they do say is that there isn't some secret, evil, smoky room cabal pulling the levers of government to, to, to kidnap children. That's just not how children end up abused. We work on these issues. We would know. Any time we spend engaging these lies necessarily distracts from the real work needed to combat human trafficking, and there is a lot to do. And here are their statements. We need policies that address systemic vulnerabilities of children to both sex trafficking and forced labor. We need housing, social, legal, and employment support for survivors and vulnerable youth. We need to invest in fixing the child welfare system, building compassionate and robust responses that meaningful support is available for any young person in need. We need to invest in better training, strengthen victim-centered investigations, and expand survivor access to alternative forms of justice. We need better data and greater diplomatic engagement so that human trafficking doesn't get sidelined as a soft issue to be addressed after real foreign policy. We need an end to discriminatory practices against immigrants and communities of color. We need accountability for corporations who can figure out how to maximize profit, but not how to protect their workers. We need funding and systems change that reflect these needs, not craven political messaging that ignores these realities in service of harmful lies. Let me read that again. Not craven political messaging that ignores these realities in service of harmful lies. As a diverse field, we acknowledge that there is a spectrum of experiences, views, and approaches. We all disagree a lot. On this, though, we stand united. And we reiterate, anybody, 
political committee candidate or media outlet who lends any credibility to QAnon conspiracies relating to human trafficking actively harms the fight against human trafficking. This is an issue where Republicans and Democrats have historically put real differences aside in service of a greater truth. Americans stand united against human trafficking. On behalf of an underfunded and nonpartisan field dedicated to ending this horrific form of exploitation and abuse and helping those who have survived, who have survived it, we urge you to engage real needs rather than politically motivated and profoundly dangerous narratives that harm the very people who they claim to be speaking for. Victims, survivors, children, families, and vulnerable communities. Okay? Now, here's the part where you should pay close attention. Take a look at this list of signers. I'm gonna just scroll down through it so you can understand that this is a letter that has been signed unanimously by some of the biggest and genuine uh, powerhouses of fighting this shit. People who have devoted their entire lives to fighting human trafficking. Often people who were human trafficked in their youth who then grew up and devoted themselves to fighting this stuff. We're just gonna go right through. Here you go. I'm scrolling down. I don't know, some of you might be getting a little bit of a uh, preview over here of how many more names we have to go down the list. Let's keep going. Now, a lot of effort went in to getting all these signatories. These are the additional signatories as of October 22, 2020. Let's keep going. Additional signers as of October 27th, 2020. Still going, still going. Wow, we even got a whole bunch of Christian organizations signed off on this. That's interesting. So there you go. For more information or to join the growing list of organizations that have signed this letter, please email freedomneedstruthletter at gmail.com. Very interesting. However, we have more to talk about with this, okay? I'm going to read you one other thing, okay? <clears throat> this is a quote from Victor Vieth the Director of Research and Education at the Zero Abuse Project. The Zero Abuse Project is, as the name suggests, a charity that is do that has existed for a long time and that is devoted to fighting against abuse, specifically child abuse. And I want you to listen to this guy's words carefully. Victor Vieth says, It has taken decades for the field to recuperate from a set of conspiracy theories about satanic cults and the child abuse that has gained traction a, 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 about child abuse, uh, satanic cults and child abuse that gained traction in the 1980s. Here's the quote. For some 20 years, we have been fighting back against the myth of the satanic panic and the ritual child abuse. Uh, we have been fighting back against that myth and we have made great, great pro progress. We got over 900 accredited children advocacy centers set up in the United States. We have lifted the bar responding to all forms of trauma treatment. We know what is, ev what is an evidence-based approach to preventing child abuse. We know what is an evidence-based approach for interviewing a child. We know what is an evidence-based approach for preparing a child for court. And we know what's a best practice for securing a conviction on the one who harmed the child. Now, almost overnight, because of the growth of conspiracy, we are back at square one. Once again, that is Victor Vieth, the Director of Research and Education at Zero Abuse Project. Here we go. This is another one. Uh, 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 this is, uh, hold on, let me get the, f I didn't get their first name. This is Mr. Young from the Chief Communications Officer at Child Help. They go by Mr. Young. It is clear that, uh, uh, it's clear that a reprieve from the conspiracy theory will start only when people realize the correlation between spreading it online and the harm it brings to at-risk children. If there was any message I could give to somebody who's sort of wrapped up in these online forums, it's that your fight against disinformation would itself be a fight against child sexual abuse. Sorry, sorry, Miss Young. I apologize, I misread. Miss Young, I apologize, my bad. Uh, with just a typo in the in the document you fighting this stuff and not sharing it 
uh, and not sending it around. If that's the least you could do is just not participate in spreading this disinformation, you would be helping the actual folks that are fighting child sexual abuse rather than sharing this or helping to pour gas on the fire. Okay? And there's one more thing I wanna read, okay? This is from a large research document that was put out by the Polaris Project, which is a uh, organization that stands against human trafficking, one of the larger ones in the world. And I want you to listen very carefully to this. The fallout from disinformation about human trafficking has a profoundly harmful impact on victims and survivors of human trafficking. The amount of time Polaris alone spent responding to false reports about the Wayfair conspiracy theory could have been used to respond to an additional 42 trafficking cases. And if you go on to read the rest of this, they outline that they are, they're organization is very sure that they would have been able to assist 42 people get their life together after dealing with human trafficking and child abuse. But their organization was overwhelmed with conspiracy nonsense. And keep in mind, when I talk about conspiracies, it's not just QAnon, it's not just Wayfair, it's not just the satanic panic, it's not just the blood libel, it's all of these nonsense conspiracy theories that convince people that there's a secret group uh, out to get them and their kids. The shit that Tucker Carlson, and of course, shoe on head, have been pushing all over the place lately. Shoe on head just created one. So now that we've got that out of the way, now that we have uh, read from literally the most qualified people in the world to talk about this issue, numerous, many different sources, okay? And I will be putting all of my sources in the video below, as always. Let's watch the video, okay? Let's keep that all in our mind. We'll react to the video and we'll see how it goes, okay? Because I have a feeling that this video is probably just going to dance around the issue and never actually address the fact that every single person who is actually helping children, every single person who has actually devoted their lives to saving children from abuse, people who their paycheck is working for a nonprofit, spending days counseling or investigating or assisting or getting them set up with legal things, not fucking making videos on the internet like Shu or even myself. But hey, at least I'm not the one propagating conspiracy theories that every single other person who actually does this stuff in the world says, please do not do because it makes it impossible for us to actually help kids. Let's watch the video, shall we? One. Today we are going to be talking about the creepy Balenciaga photo shoot you may have heard of. How I helped accidentally kick off Balenciaga Gate, the bizarre defense- Accidentally is an interesting choice of words. Accidentally is an interesting choice of words there. Huh of the photo shoot and how I lost friends over it. No, I'm not joking. This is going to be a wild one. So get comfy, get cozy, I made you some hot chocolate. Look, it's got marshmallows in it. So for those of you who don't know, because I sure as hell did not before all of this, yeah, it is kind of funny this. Like, I'm so quirky hot chocolate chocolate before I talk about how I accidentally started a mass deranged conspiracy theory. Oh, boy. Yeah, very much DJ Mule energy. That's true. Balenciaga is a high-end fashion clothing brand that sells ugly shit like this for thousands of dollars. I personally do not buy Balenciaga clothing. I am not a filthy capitalist. I buy my clothes on Amazon, like a good socialist. Anyway, the company is currently under fire for their new holiday collection photo shoot. And when you see these photos, you will probably understand why. One was a little girl- Notice that? Girl on a couch with a very worried- I already am catching the slights of hand. You are going to feel weird when you see these photos. Do you know what that's called? That's- that, That's- that's so interesting. 
it is weird to blur the face of the child here, given that uh, Shoe on Head has already put out this all over the place. Also, um, we're are we just rehashing it? Is that this? Is that what this is? She's just doing the same video that that she did before. Is that what this is? It's called priming your audience. Yeah, poisoning the well. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's a sale. It's a literal sales technique. Yeah, it's interesting. Anyway, let's continue. Sad look on her face, surrounded by alcohol and holding a teddy bear, a teddy bear that was surrounded by alcohol. There's no alcohol in this image. There's empty wine glasses and there is a water flask. Where's the alcohol? Where's the alcohol? What is this shit? Do you see what I... It, we're not even a minute in and already there's poisoning the well, already making claims that are blatantly false that you can see with your own eye. There's no alcohol here. These are wi empty wine glasses. This is what I'm talking about, about conspiracy, okay? It's, it's drawing red circles around weird things and making connections that only your own mind has invented. But see, when people get panicked, when people get uh, worked up by a narrative, a lot of times, they get a little irresponsible. Anyway, let's continue. Wearing a yeah, wait, it literally says H2O on it. Whatever. Elac says, remember, the implication of something bad is the same as, is not the same as something bad. Yeah, of course. See, that's one of the things that conspiracy theorists like to do. Uh, it's, it's an Alex Jones kind of move. You imply that there's something bad going on there, but what's actually going on? But when you're trying to manipulate somebody, when you're trying to manipulate a narrative, the truth doesn't matter anymore. Does it, Shu? Does it, Shu? Let's continue. A full BDSM harness. There was other pictures of the girl laying on the couch, as well as another shot of another said little girl on the bed. Okay. So these are different product lines. They're both by Balenciaga, but what she's not telling you is that this is a separate photo shoot for separate products. As you can see, just by looking at the stuff on the table, you can actually tell that besides this flask, the items are different. There are different items. Additionally, this is not a fetish gear. This is a goth bear. This is a bear with gothic and gothic outfit. You can literally buy everything like this in every mall in America at a hot topic. Only you make that shit sexual. It is you who saw a uh, a, 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 a a leather harness and immediately went to a uh, BDSM. It's funny too because in my video that I did on this uh, conspiracy theory already, the 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 other shoe video, which you know it'll be here and down there in the comments, um, I pointed out that you can find literally at Petco in every Petco in America leather harnesses for dogs that look identical to the ones that are being put on these bears, and also they're on the bear. I'm I'm just. This is what I'm talking about, about the conspiracy theory crap. It's just only Shu is making this, and Shu is spinning it into a narrative. Uh, now, maybe it, it's possible that during this video, Shu on Head brings out evidence that these children were abused. But let's find out if that actually happens. Let's go. Bed surrounded by Balenciaga items, chains, and a whole ass leash. A little weird, a little sussy. Like the pictures just. Little sussy, a little weird. So it's your vibes, is what you're saying. So you're saying is you and your fans, let me just get this clear. You and your fans alleged a pedophile conspiracy. And by the way, Shoe on Head did repeatedly on social media claim that this was a pedophile conspiracy. Just so we're clear, you alleged a pedophile conspiracy because you thought it looked a little sussy. Remember what I read just before this about how this actually damages, like literally, recordedly, markedly, every single anti-child abuse organization in the United States essentially signed off on a letter saying that this ruins their ability to actually help people? Let's continue. Gave you 
bad vibes. But anyway, to make things even worse, right on their homepage, right next to that photo shoot, was a photo of a purse on a desk. Ooh, sneaky shoe! Ooh, let's play that again, sneaky! Right on their homepage, right next to that photo shoot, was a photo of a purse on a desk. Seems normal, right? But the only visible paper sticking out from under the purse, the- Before she gets into the, the conspiracy stuff, let me just be clear. When she says this photo was next to the other photos, this photo, was in a slideshow on Balenciaga's website where you could go through their different product lines. This photo right here, you'll notice if you yourself, you use your brain, don't use shoes brain, use your brain. Go tell me if that purse is present in the, uh, in the pictures of the, with the kids and the teddy bears. You'll discover it's not because this photo is from a different product line. A product line for adults. This is a purse, this purse, hold on, let me get the red lines out. Can we get the red lines? That would be great, hold on. This purse right here is from a separate photo shoot and a separate product line than the photos with the kids. But notice how manipulatively Shoe on Head framed that. It's right, it's there with it. It's, it's, it's in there. None of the actual truth, which is that this is a separate photo for a separate product line, that isn't associated with the child, the children photo shoot at all. It's only, the only place where this connection exists is right between shoe on heads fucking eyeballs, okay? That is the only place where this connection exists. It is in her mind and in the minds of her fans who take her word as valuable. Let's continue. The only piece of paper with any text on it, conveniently right there, was a court case related to child pornography. Creepy. Coincidentally, to I didn't know this was just gonna be the whole conspiracy laid out in a single video. So, first of all, you wouldn't be, uh, you wouldn't be wrong if you looked at this and said, God damn, that's fucking blurry. Right? So the corner of a piece of paper in this photo shoot, and let me just uh, show you the, let's, can we look at the picture again? There we go. So here's the biggest, highest quality version that I can get. Now I want you to notice something about this. Here, let's bring this up real quick. Notice how many papers are in here. So we got receipt, we got a paper here, we got a paper here, we got papers up here, we got a paper here, we got a paper here. Now I don't know if anybody combed through all of these papers over here, but the paper they're talking about is this one right here. Okay, you see that? This is the spot they're talking about right here. Now, <sighs> Shoe on Head says that it's a, a, well, let's get her words. Let's just, let's just rewind real quick. I wanna hear what her exact words on this were. The purse, the only piece of paper with any text on it, conveniently right there, was a court case related to child Creepy. A court case related to child pornography. Well, you know, it's interesting because uh, me and a lot of other people went and looked into it. And actually, if you go read the actual court case, it actually quite, is quite apparent that this is a court case that makes it easier to prosecute child pornography. And it, now, if you're dumb, or if you're easily manipulatable, or if you're very trusting of online voices and don't do any research for yourself because you just want to take what they tell you as word, um, you might go look at that and say, oh, but the court case that's being mentioned here says that, that child porn isn't a First Amendment issue. And that's correct. It's because the court case in question was saying that you should stop bringing it to the Supreme Court because it's wasting everyone's time. This can be prosecuted under other laws outside of the First Amendment. Now, it's funny because you would assume that somebody who was thinking rationally or gave a shit about the truth, that they would go find out what that court case actually said. But it's much easier to go all Pepe Sylvia and, and start putting up your, uh, your red string, your circles and red circles and highlighters and going like this and acting as though you've truly uh, figured something out.
But seriously, if you don't believe me, go look at the court case yourself. Go come to your own conclusions. You'll discover that what I said is true. Let's continue, because there's a little more that I want to say about this. Actually, real quick, I'm going to take a question from chat. Huffy says, I think we should at least be able to admit it's a little weird to have that court document in a random, unrelated photo shoot. I don't think it indicates a secret cabal, but it's odd, to say the least. Many things in the world are odd. So let's take a moment. We're going to pause here for just a second to answer this. Let's let's do a little bit of intelligent theory crafting on what could lead that court case to be in a photo shoot reminder for an adult for a purse for an adult. Well, let's let's think of some facts. The first one, which is most interesting, is that Supreme Court cases such as this one are in the public domain, which means anyone can use them for any reason for anything at all. They are public domain. Anybody can print off that court case and use it as a part of their TV show or as a part of their photo shoot. And in fact, this happens all the time, especially in professional photo shoots. Because, you know, there's a thing called a lorem ipsum. Uh, if you've ever heard of a lorem ipsum, a lorem ipsum is like when you put fake text on a page and it says like lorem ipsum dolorit blah 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 blah. There's a whole thing. It's fake words. It's gibberish. And it's used for a lot of stock photo shoots. However, Lorem ipsums look bad. Everybody knows what a lorem ipsum looks like. And so art artists or artistically inspired phot photographers don't want to use a lorem ipsum because it stands out like a sore thumb. So they try to find things that are in the public domain. And as it turns out, once again, if we open up this image, if we take a look at this image, you'll notice something about the product. Here we go again. You'll notice something about the product, which is it's an adult's briefcase. It is a large purse that is clearly meant to hold papers. They have put papers on what appears to be a lawyer's desk because they're trying to sell a purse to lawyers. Now, that's situation number one, which to me seems the most reasonable by many, many margins, by many, many steps. The other possibility is that the artist was trying to make a statement, which artists do. Now, <sighs> Shu on Head has spent the last few weeks on Twitter trying to get Elon Musk to reinstate Alex Jones in the name of free speech. But isn't artistic expression, even artistic expression that you find weird or sussy valid like let's just review the facts of the case as of right now balenciaga fired the artist and is as last i heard considering suing the artist shoe on head and shoe on head's fans have been largely celebrating this idea shoe on head is celebrating that an artist who in the best case scenario, just put random court documents printed off from the, from the Supreme Court's website into their photo shoot, uh, but, or in the worst case, made a, uh, made a some sort of statement that people can't, we, we don't know what the statement is supposed to be because it's only the corner of a piece of paper. So at worst, an artist made a sussy statement and free speech advocate, shoe on head is, and, and her fans, mostly, are celebrating the fact that a corporation has thrown this artist under the bus. Doesn't that seem like a little bit, a little bit like you maybe don't care about free speech at all? Like that you're celebrating a million dollar luxury corporation throwing an artist under the bus? Let me propose something. What if the artist just had a bad idea? Like what if the artist was trying to make like a statement? or something that like, wow, you know, we're like, you know, we're really, we censor certain types of art, bro. And they're just kind of dumb. What if they, what if they just chose a random paper? You don't even know. We don't know the reason why the artist put that in there, but you want them to be sued and fired and you want, and, and you're willing to allege a pedophilic conspiracy? What the fuck? Does, that is a enormous jump in logic. And also, conveniently, 
you'll notice that there was that this whole time there's been a narrative crafting. There's been certain things being picked out, plucked out of their context, and put into a certain order. It's like bricolage, if you're familiar with the term. Let's continue. Coincidentally, two days before this all hit the internet, Balenciaga left Twitter. Not only did they delete their Twitter account, but they deleted every single photo off of their Instagram page. Why are you running? Why are you running? I'm gonna have to do it again. Balenciaga always deletes everything off of their Instagram every time they move into a new into new lines of fashion. Because they are a high fashion brand, they devote their page to whatever they're selling at the moment because they won't sell any more of it. And in fact, if you go on Internet Archive and you plug in Balenciaga's Instagram, you can go and you can see a whole record of, of, of different points in history where they have done exactly what they did here. Shoe on Head has made the classic error of assuming everything is about you. Shoe on Head believes that because of her incredible conspiracy revelation that B Balenciaga just deleted it because of that, when in truth they delete it every single season. But let's continue. Let's hear what other garbage. So I actually found all of this out because I saw a TikTok on my Twitter timeline by the streamer Brittany Venti, and she was talking about <laughs> Oh no! Brittany Venti! God, it's gonna take us forever to get through this, but you guys, you guys wanna see something funny? All right, real quick. If you wanna hear the funniest thing that you've ever heard in your entire life, go ahead and, uh, go ahead and post a, uh, post a keck, post a keck D in chat if you wanna hear the funniest thing in your life. Post a keck D real quick. Come on, chat. If you're in website chat, type, type me up a keck D. Yeah, look at those Keck D's coming in. Not a Keck V, that's the wrong community. Keck D. Look at that. Look at them coming in. All right. So, Shoe on Head has now admitted that she cribbed this conspiracy theory from Brittany Venti. Now, Brittany Venti was not credited up to this point. Which, okay, you know, whatever. It's a conspiracy theory. You know, conspiracy theorists aren't really the best about giving credit. But... What if I told you, what if I told you that Brittany Venti has a history with shoe on head? And I mean, as in, <laughs> as in Brittany Venti has gone pretty hard against shoe on head in the past. And now we have shoe on head stealing Brittany Venti's spotlight. Okay, let me show you where this is going to be great. Hold on a second. You guys are going to love this shit. All right, I discovered this this morning, okay? Take a look at this. This is a video by Brittany Venti, which is titled Shoe on Head, The Ballad of a Small Bean. It is was re-uploaded due to nudity. It is one of two videos Brittany Venti, well, Brittany Venti's made a number of videos about Shoe on Head. This one's a few years old now, about only four though. Uh, and this one is a second video about shoe on head. And if you're wondering why it had to be removed for nudity, this is a video of Brittany Venti canceling shoe on head for exposing her audience of children to sexual impurity. You see, Brittany Venti is a hard line far writer, okay? Like a open far writer. And if you go and look at Brittany Venti's uh, channel, you'll see that most of her stuff is groomer panic videos right now. A lot of her videos are targeting individual trans people and making fun of them. And I mean, like, she goes to people's GoFundMes and mocks trans people who are trying to raise money for stuff. I'm not kidding. You can go to Brittany Venti's channel. It's public, okay? But Brittany Venti previously tried to cancel Shoe on Head for sexual perversion towards children for exposing children to perverted sexuality. Isn't that so demented? Isn't that just the most, it, it, it's so interesting. 
And Sh Shoe on Head, now I don't think Shoe on Head intentionally stole Brittany Venti's work, but it's like a, it's like a kar karmic alignment that Shoe on Head would happen to steal the work of, a con of another conspiracy theorist, a conspiracy theorist who previously tried to cancel Shoe on Head for exposing children in her audience to disgusting sexuality. Is this just the pointing Spider-Man meme? It's the pointing Spider-Man meme. Did I not tell you that that was the funniest shit you had ever heard? Danny says, Venti is so fucking racist she got banned from Twitch. She got banned from Twitch. Okay, hold on. She got banned from Twitch for baking mud cakes on stream and claiming it was authentic African food. That's, that's Brittany Venti. That's where Shu's source was for this. It's kind of funny, too, that Shu stole Br Brittany Venti's work, and now that Shu is getting heat on it, she's blaming Brittany Venti. Wow, that's so dirty! You know, one of the things that I, uh, that has become increasingly clear in all of this is that, uh, is that Shu on Head has no spine. Shu on Head is a coward. Shu on Head never says anything, uh, clear, and only, uh, nose tips and teehees about conspiracy theories that go way beyond her. She takes, she takes seeming pleasure in convincing her fans to go do the dirty work for her. Let's continue. This. And I couldn't believe it, so I went to Balenciaga's website, and lo and behold, it was real. The creepy photo shoots, the CP document, everything was right there. The CP document? It wasn't a CP document. You manipulative fuck. You lying manipulative fuck. It's a public domain court document about a case that made it easier to prosecute child porn. You manipulative slimeball. So I made my own tweet about it, and this tweet winded up absolutely popping off. I had no idea the entire internet started talking about it because once a tweet of mine starts to blow up, I just mute it and just move on with my day. My tweet was- Bullshit. Bullshit. When this originally came out, we went through her comments. She was replying to comments. Bullshit. Just, do shoe on head fans really buy this shit? Do shoe on head fans really eat from the trough like this? This person has no respect for you. No respect for your, your fucking eyes and brain. Holy fuck. Just straight up. Eat up. It's all over mainstream media. New York Post even called me a quote, eagle eyed social media watchdog. Sorry, which, uh, which, what, which, which newspaper was that? My tweet was all over mainstream media. New York Post even called me a quote. New York Post, huh? Look, if you're a member of my community, you know the New York Post is a literal fake news rag. It is, it is one step above the Babylon Bee. And if you're not a member of my community, I urge you to, uh, with honest eyes, with truth in your heart, with the goal of reaching truth, go check out the history of the New York Post and you tell me if you think that that's an organization that you want calling you a eagle-eyed media watchdog. The New York Post is, oh God, it's, it's one of the most infamous fake news rags. It's like the original one. Eagle-eyed social media watch. Isn't, isn't, isn't New York Post a literal tabloid? Yes, it's a literal tabloid. New York Post is the type of bat baby, the bat child. That's the type of stuff they do. They've just gotten into QAnon conspiracy now, interestingly. Dog. Okay. This spiraled completely out of control. People were burning their Balenciaga items. There is just no PR team that is going to get them out. No mercy for pedos. We're going to see a lot of this as this goes on, I have a feeling. Now, I mean, I'm sorry. Not for, I don't know about this video. I don't know if Shu shows this, but afterwards, I'm going to show you some of the deranged shit that Shu on Head fans have been saying about this. And I mean Shoe on Head fans, seeing as how they only showed up in my comment section after Shoe on Head started talking about it. Weird how that works. Let's go. This one. 
making rap songs against Balenciaga. Now I burn Balenciaga. They keep coming for our kids. Now we need to follow. Design the brands that they hide. I know hell is hot. Even vandalizing Balenciaga stores. Even van pedophilia, pedophilia, pedophilia. Children are not sexual objects. Because of Shu on Head's post. Shu on Head's deranged conspiracy theory post. Vandalizing Balenciaga stores. Also, just so everyone knows, I am not suicidal. Title. Just in case news comes out that I was found with three designer bullets in the back of my head. And I don't your fans are the ones doing the shit. People who buy your bullshit are the ones going and breaking into buildings. What do you mean you? Shoe on Head has become a professional victim. That's it. This video is called Why I Was Cancelled, and it's about anybody who, it's so far, has been just her retelling her side of the story and acting like a victim while showing on the screen that people who believed her lie, people who believed her lie went and, and vandalized buildings and accused people of pedophilia and threatened people with death, and she's acting like the victim. Literal. Professional victim. I don't think Brittany Venti is either, so if either of us, <laughs> we do not have information that will lead to the arrest of Hillary Clinton. The best part about this, though, has to be I was fact-checked fact by Twitter, and this is what they said. Although Shu often makes comments to cause amusement or laughter, this is an authentic Balenciaga marketing photograph. It contains an excerpt from the U.S. Supreme Court opinion in United States v. Williams, which upheld a part of federal child pornography law. Hold on a second. Oh, let's see how this goes. Is she gonna say that this is a win for her? Because the, 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 the fact checker checked and said that this is a real photo, which nobody ever doubted that it was a real photo, and the fact checker also held the argument that it was a law against child pornography? She's, she's, I, I, oh my God. I've never seen one of these fact checker things just be like, fact check true. <laughs> I know. Oh my God! Oh my fucking God! She did it! It's it said that it was a law against child pornography. You fucking idiot! Are you for real? How are shoe? How 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 do shoe fans buy this? Oh oh my God! Do do you have any self respect to the shoe fans out there? Do you have any self respect? Let's no, continue. she likes to get a little silly, but she's actually serious this time. I also love that it just says shoe. Like Twitter and I are just on a first name basis now. Now you're probably asking, Shu, why would a high-end fashion brand pull this like where's Waldo shit? Well, there are a If we're doing conspiracy theories, if we're doing conspiracy theories, you know that there is a distinct actual possibility that that caption was written by Elon Musk himself, and that's why he said Shu, because he talks with Shu and goes back and forth with Shu on Twitter. You can go see that on Shu's Twitter. Just, just since we're doing conspiracy theories, everybody. A few theories. The most obvious one is to just look edgy and subversive. Nothing like a good old controversy to get eyes on your brand. So if this Nothing like a good controversy to get eyes on your brand, shoe on head. I wonder who was the main beneficiary of the Balenciaga thing. Could it have been you raking in hundreds and thousands of views with a fucking false narrative that you made up in your own goddamn head? This was some kind of pathetic attempt at an attention grab. They sure got attention, and much more. I wouldn't put it past Corpos to do some weird attention whoring like this, and I definitely wouldn't put- I definitely wouldn't put it past a 10-year veteran of YouTube. Keep in mind, Shoe on Head's channel has 1.9 million views. Shoe on Head isn't the little guy. Shoe on Head isn't the small bean. Shoe on Head has a huge channel that makes a lot of monies. Shoe on Head is a one percenter. 
Let's just remember that when we're talking about corpos and corpos, because this isn't, this is some corpo on corpo action, all right? past the fashion industry. The other theory is that this is just a little wink, a little nod to the other freaks in the industry. Think the Wilhelms- Again, what evidence do you have of that? Where's the evidence that this is a wink or nod to anybody? You have nothing. You are jumping on board with the firing and persecution of an artist, and you don't even know why it was there in the first place. This is disgustingly irresponsible scream but for like little saint james tourists finally balenciaga the brand itself came out and apologized we sincerely apologize for any offense our holiday campaign may have caused our plush bear bags should have not been featured with children in this campaign we have immediately removed the campaign from all platforms we apologize for displaying unsettling documents in our campaign we take this matter very seriously and are taking legal action against the parties responsible for creating the set and including unapproved items for our spring campaign photo shoot we strongly condemn abuse of children in any form we we stand for children's safety and well-being. With Balenciaga facing a firestorm over a series of disturbing new ads. All oh, oh yeah, I love it. TMZ. Oh yeah, TMZ is the best source ever, shoe on head. What quality investigative, uh, investigative pedo hunting you're doing here. Citing fucking TMZ. Eyes and ears were on their highest profile partner for comment. Kim finally released a statement on Sunday calling herself disgusted and outraged. Meanwhile, her ex-husband, Kanye West, after going on Infowars and saying, quote, There are a lot of things I love about Hitler. Ran defense for Balenciaga. And now all of a sudden, everyone is so outraged and focused on Balenciaga, but then we're still aborting our kids. We're still fornicating, but oh, we don't we don't wear Balenciaga now. Hey, Shu, real question here. Have you ever thought about why he might have done that? Have you ever thought about why he would want to pivot attention from Balenciaga towards his own enemies, towards his own political ends? Interesting how that goes, huh? This is just yeah, this is just more well poisoning. Let's go, though. You shut the hell up. So fellow paranoid schizophrenics started digging and found more creepy things in the photos from Balenciaga. And this has spiraled into a much bigger conspiracy. This is the thing with conspiracies though. They're always rabbit holes. When there's so many things that are unexplained about the world and people just kind of feel helpless and powerless, people understandably start to look for answers elsewhere. And a lot of people took this Balenciaga thing as just kind of the rich and powerful doing what they do in secret now out in the open. Do I think this is some kind of Pizzagate thing where Balenciaga is like hiding children in their basement? Do I think they are literally trafficking children? I don't think that. I don't know that. I've never claimed to know that. What I do know is that this is a huge on Twitter, by the way, Shoe on Head was going around in her comments saying that this was a, a literal pedo conspiracy, saying that people who don't agree with her insane posting were uh, defending pedophiles. She said that this was a, uh, uh, this was pedo shit, that people were defending pedo shit. Uh, oh my God, like I could just, like, do we wanna just bring some of these up? Like I got, I've got, you could just, they're all over the place. She said this to all kinds of people. She was saying all over the place that this is pedo shit. What's with the pedo shit? Stop defending the pedo shit. What are you fucking talking about? You retreated because you have no spine. You won't stand by the fact that you have blood on hands. up from a billion dollar company and when a billion dollar company f***s up who better to come to their defense than the progressive left who better to come to their defense than them putting out a fake uh, pr statement that you gobble up because you're brain dead and then your followers all gobble it up as they fucking bury an artist who didn't do anything wrong you haven't even proven that the artist did anything wrong you haven't even proved that the artist even had negative intent all you know is that there was a document in a photo and nothing more. That's it. And other things. People were drawing lines to the connections, which you never show. 
Now, isn't it interesting? We've spent seven minutes of this video so far, more of me talking because that's how it works when you gotta debunk bullshit. We've spent seven minutes of this video of Shu reiterating the conspiracy theory, and now she decides to point it at the progressive left. Boy, that's an interesting angle to take. It's an interesting angle to get mad at the progressive left when it was your fans, people who were reacting to your conspiracy theory that went and destroyed stores. It's people who were uh, your fans who were making death threats and accusing people with no evidence of being pedophiles. It was you doing all of this, but you're gonna point, it's weird to point, it's really weird, isn't it? Can we stop pretending Shu is an ally yet? Shu on head belongs in a prison cell for hate speech. Shu herself is basically a terrorist enabler at this point. You are a Nazi. Shu is literally just a Nazi. Yeah, um, Shu is a Nazi. Shu on head is a fascist and a danger to our community. This is- So these are just random thing people who disagreed with her? The good news is, is that I will be able to counter as this video goes on, with a whole lot of interesting comments of my own. A lot of people have come to accuse me, just for disagreeing with Shu, of being a pedophile. Which, you know, when people keep saying pedophiles get the wood chipper, you gotta do this, that, and the other thing, when there's, when there's people perpetuating a groomer panic right now, when there are people saying that they're going to kill anybody that they think is a pedophile, you know, it almost makes me feel like maybe Shu is just being a little bit of a professional victim again. Kind of seems like Shu is just doing a big boo-hoo routine after she created, not created, sorry, borrowed from Brittany Venti and then popularized a conspiracy theory that has absolutely no evidence to support it. Weird how that goes your daily reminder that Shu on head is a Nazi. I'm sick of Shu on head. She needs to go. No more. I think that if a button to deplatform her existed, we should push it this instant. Do you think reporting her vids would do anything? Hate speech and all? How about we mass report her Twitter? Fuck Shu. This crosses a line. Shu is a cum dump enabler for fascist violence. Who'd expected anything else from a Nazi bimbo hag? She's fundamentally the enemy and should always be treated as such. People like Shu and Matt Walsh are the types of people I believe committing acts of violence against is morally just- By the way, I just want to say, this is a really crappy uh, censorship job. It's really weird to leave people's photos in here. I mean, I'm not defending these people, but these could be like, just random fuckheads on the internet. Like, who are these people? And if you're, if you're trying to censor them, just censor the photo and the names. Whatever, let's continue. Justified. Now I just need to make this clear that this is in no way a representation of the entire left online. Most of the people who By the way, just a little quick moment. If you thought that was compelling, you should, um, you should go watch my other video on Shu, my original video about the Balenciaga thing, where we go through Shu's comments live. We just, we don't cherry pick, we go live to Shu on Head's tweet, and we go take a look at what people were saying in the comments, including people that Shu is mutuals with, who were advocating, and this is where it's gonna get interesting, because a lot of the people that you can go see in the footage of that video that we posted, a lot of the people we're weirdly making ties to the LGBT community and then saying that people needed to die, which is really weird because, you know, like Shu said, Shu wasn't the one making it about LGBTQ people, but Shu's fans sure were. Some of Shu's mutuals, including one who has regularly been on Tucker Carlson, were and making death threats. Oh, and oh yes, wouldn't it be shocking if it was in the comments of this video as well? Let's continue though. Let's continue. Let's continue. Follow me are left wing and they agreed that yeah, this photo shoot was really weird. The people who are mad about this are from a pretty small bubble, but nevertheless, lo and behold, I was apparently canceled. Now I use the term canceled sort of sarcastically. It's almost like she has a wide range of fans. Hmm. Because I really wasn't canceled. It's kind of impossible to cancel me in general because I have four different fan bases and they all hate each other and me. And a lot of you guys watch- That's not a defense, Shu. That's not a defense, even a little bit. 
It's not anybody else's problem that your shithole fan base hates you. My fan base is proud of me. My ancestors look on me with pride. Can you say the same Western woman? My community loves my ass. They are proud of me. They fucking bust my ass all the time. I get corrected all the time. My email is full of corrections, which I issue on stream, which I reply to in the, in the, in the, uh, in the, in the emails themselves. But my community is proud of me. Sounds like a you problem, Shu. This really sounds like a fucking shoe problem. This probably didn't even know all of this happened, but it was just very weird and I need to talk about this. Sean head on her way to once again use her massive platform to provide the neo-Nazis in her audience. Real quick. This is the comment that I was talking about, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight it real quick, okay? This is right down here. Pedro L. Gonzalez who is, uh, was, at the time of this making, a mutual of Shoe on Head. Pedro L. Gonzalez is a far-right, uh, a very far-right provocateur who has been on Tucker Carlson. And in fact, if you search Pedro Gonzalez's name alongside Shoe on Head name on Twitter, you will discover that Shoe on Head actually directly asked this guy to bring up questions to Tucker Carlson, which then happened. This is open, publicly available on Twitter. He's on a first name basis with Shu. Yes, we know. It's very, very interesting. Actually, you know what? Oh wait, we got a, We got the tweet right there. You want to prove it? We want to prove it? Here we go. In times like these, Shu could just retweet the ghoul, explain why he's wrong, and tell his hateful ass to fuck off. She never does that. Why though? Who knows? Here you go. Here is Pedro. I want to remind, remind everyone that this is the thread that kicked it all off after Vosh read this off on stream. So when I reference useful idiots, oh my god, wait a minute, this is from one of her previous pedo hunting incidents. A pedo hunting incident that interestingly used, uh, used propaganda from the Daily Stormer. Very interesting, that. But there's Pedro L. Gonzalez. Pedro, please look away. Unsurprising that the Libertarian Party is what, what's all the fuss about pedophilia? Why are you as a father so obsessed with concerning your growing normalization of pedophilia? Very interesting. Just, just so that we're clear, this is not some random shoe follower. This is a mutual that shoe is on first name basis with. In fucking incredible. That's, that's who's being quote tweeted here. And by the way, what they say, I'm just gonna, we're gonna go back to highlighting this so we can understand. We are up against demons. The groomer problem is real. It's not a dumb culture war issue. These people want to rape your kids in one way or another and they think it's funny. Now we all know what the uh, groomer problem is, right? The groomer re problem refers to another conspiracy theory a Republican conspiracy theory that gender ideology is grooming your children. It's a, it is a conspiracy theory that alleges that, that LGBTQ people are inherently dangerous to children. There's no evidence for this. In fact, the only evidence that exists is against this. And yet it's been pushed. And Shu is now defending this person right now. Yep, here's him referring to it just, just, just previously. Same guy. Pedro L. Gonzalez, the new American genocide, the great replacement, transitioning our kids, claiming America's communities, the problems with, the main, with this and mainstream conservatism. These are the types of people that Shu finds it necessary to, uh, I don't know, downplay and to not correct. And, and if you go to her original tweet, the Balenciaga one, this guy is right up at the top. He's one of the first comments because his reply got boosted. Shu never made a statement about it. Shu never said, bro, shut the fuck up. It's funny because lots of Shu fans have said, ooh, who made it about LGBTQ? Shu fans did. Shu's fans, Shu's friends that she's on a first name basis with, who she still supports to this day are the ones who made it about LGBTQ. And we're gonna talk about that some more as this goes on, but let's finish this fucking shithole of a video with fodder they can use to justify the murder of gay people, but this time the day after another anti-gay terror attack. I'm sorry. Where are the gays? My po 
It's funny that she chooses this one because Pedro L. Gonzalez is directly referencing the gays. And this tweet, by the way, which is Xander Hall, if, I not, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I, everybody, it was public. Uh, this is Xander Hall calling her out. Xander Hall is calling out the guy who is who is in her comments that she will not call down, that she is on a front first name basis with. It's her follower. How can you be, how can you gaslight people on such a high level? Are shoe on head fans that traumatized? Are you that gaslit by shoe on head that you will buy when Xander Hall replies to one of her fans, one of the biggest comments on her on her post, which she's on a first name basis with, and then she tries to blame Xander Hall for making it about the gays when this guy is clearly making it about the gays. Let's continue. Murder of gay people, but this time the day after another anti-gay terror attack. I'm sorry. Where are the gays? My post had absolutely nothing to do with LGBT people. The Balenciaga thing in general had nothing to do with LGBT people. Where did this come from? This guy took a random- isn't it nice that you're watching with an honest streamer? Isn't it nice that right now you're here to actually have the veil pulled off your eyes? Isn't it incredible that I can go and show you that that tweet that she even shows on screen was explicitly making it about gay people to which Xander Hall was responding? And also, it's really funny because um, Xander Hall's video explicitly addresses this fact. Real quick. We live in a political climate where it is unequivocal that the term groomer is being used to libel innocent people. The biggest platforms in the country, all of the biggest conservative pro uh, uh, presenters in the country tweeted out that there was a grooming event going on at the, the, uh, the bar Q, the club Q uh, uh, location where the shooting occurred. There was no grooming event. That event was a family friendly, no nudity involved, no sexuality involved drag event earlier on in the day. There was no grooming event. They made it about gay people. They created the libel that says that equates all gay people with groomers. And guess who's perpetuating it? Shoo. It's really weird that maybe in the middle of a uh, moral panic, uh, the likes of which we haven't seen in years, around falsely accusing gay people of being pedophiles, that if you start a gigantic conspiracy about pedophiles in that environment, when you are plugged into that environment, shoe on head, and when you know the people in that environment and you know what your friends talk about, when you see it in your comments and do nothing about it, isn't it interesting that you might contribute to a bunch of false accusations? When there are a bunch of conservatives, when the mainstream conservative line is to equate LGBT pe people with, with groomers, and you decide to start a groomer panic, based on no evidence, wouldn't, isn't it strange that your brainless followers would charge forward with that? And they did. And if you want the full evidence of that particular portion, go watch my other video, because I'm not doing that all over again. I already went through all of her, well, we might go through her comments on this particular video. But if you wanna see her uh, comments, uh, the comments of her fans all over social media in real time, the other video is where you wanna go, all right? Holy fuck. Let's continue. Random response to my tweet and implied I was responsible for someone else's opinion and therefore fueling hate crimes against gay people. I'm just confused how Balenciaga posting an ad of kids holding stuffed animals in fetish gear turned into LGBT groomer discourse. Did I miss something? Look at the quote tweets and replies to her tweet thread from her followers. I have half a million followers on Twitter. I have over a million subscribers on YouTube. I am not the re wrangler. There were a And yet, a person that you are on first name basis with, somebody who took your talking points to Tucker Carlson, someone who is at the very top of the pile of replies, one of the most uh, atten uh, attention supplies, 
or uh, attention replies, more the one that was at, that got the most attention. Sorry about that. It stumbled a little bit. Uh, and you did nothing. In fact, instead of doing anything at all positive to counteract this heinous message, a message that says that we are dealing with demons, that says that the the groomer question, directly referencing a a nightmarish libel against LGBT people as a whole, you did nothing. The only thing you did was to mock the person who was pushing back against that Xander Hall. You slimy, spineless wretch. A few people, not that many, who took my tweet and ran with their own narrative of it. I cannot control the opinions of other people. And a lot of these people aren't even in my audience. They're just- N Notice, hold on. I wanna just call something out. I cannot control the opinions of these people in a video where she admits that she started a conspiracy theory that blew up. As it turns out, Shoe on Head can control the opinions of a lot of people in her audience, and she can control who is in her audience, at least to a certain degree. And to be charitable, there are always shitheads in communities. There are always going to be assholes who, who do shit that you don't want them to do. You cannot control it to, compl to a complete level. But if you can influence the creation of a international conspiracy theory with your shitty tweets and your shitty videos, you absolutely can at least denounce the people who are trying to make it about killing gay people. But you don't, which says a lot, doesn't it? Doesn't it say a lot? I'm sure there's a lot of shoe on head viewers, uh, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, shoe on head viewers peeking in today. And I just want to know, how do you live like this? How do you live being manipulated and lied to by somebody, by a 30 plus year old woman who acts like a literal child, like a small bean while simultaneously igniting conspiracy theories that by her own admission got buildings damaged got innocent people in trouble. Blood on hands. Let's go. Random f***ing people on Twitter who found my tweet because it went viral. That is how a public forum works. If someone oh, sorry, is real, real quick, real quick. Hold on, I just want to show you this. Uh, Joe Schmo, a self-identified uh, uh, shoe on head fan in my YouTube chat says, I do so comfortably, groomer. Nice. Nice, look at that. We even, how convenient that a shoe on head fan volunteered to pop in and tell us exactly what they think. How curious. They've never chatted on our channel before. <laughs> how interesting, <laughs> how curious. Let's continue. Egregiously being homophobic or harassing people in my replies, I'll just block them. There's nothing else I can do. What do you want me to do about- I wonder if shoe on head blocked Pedro, who she's mutuals with who had one of the biggest conspiracy, I mean, one of the biggest replies to her tweet at all that got an incredible amount of, I wonder, I wonder. The opinions of other people. Why don't you focus on what I said and did? Is it because I said and did nothing wrong? I mean, the hmm. You just admitted in your own words to creating this conspiracy theory, which led to people burning products, defacing buildings, and accusing people of pedophilia without evidence. Well, I guess we, I guess, hey, look, maybe she was finally, kind of, weirdly, after couching it and saying it was an accident and I didn't do anything, saying that she did nothing. It's so strange. It's really weird, almost like uh, Shoe on Head just won't take responsibility. It's so strange. This with the most respect possible. Posting this a day after a homophobic terror attack that happened because the trans drag groomer scare comes off in very bad taste. I think choosing to bring this to light right after the Yeah, the Shoe on Head, uh, Shoe on Head has investigated Shoe on Head and has found Shoe on Head not guilty. Great job, great job. Ex oh, excellent. Just beautiful. Shooting is phenomenally poor taste. She went ahead throwing queers under the bus right after a mass shooting to cater to her homophobic audience. There was a mass shooting in a gay club in Colorado a few days before this Balenciaga thing broke. And because there was a shooting at a gay nightclub, 
I can't talk about pedophilia. Oh, hey! Look at that! She admitted it again, unintentionally, but she admitted it. See, at the beginning of this video, Shuon had said that it was just weird, that the photos were just weird. Now she's saying she's talking about pedophilia. That's such a strange, what an interesting sleight of hand. What an interesting manipulative tactic to twist your narrative. Hmm, that's so, that's so interesting. What? To shitpost the LGBT community on f***ing Trans Day of Remembrance is so disrespectful, I don't even know what to say. Same vibe as criticizing veterans on Veterans Day. Let me get this straight. Criticizing a fashion brand for pedo-baiting on Trans Day of Remembrance is the same as criticizing veterans on Veterans Day? Bro, you don't even need the far right at this Now it's pedo-baiting. So it was pet, first it was weird, then it was pedophilia, now it's pedo baiting. Which one is it, Shu? Or, or are you just full of shit? Cause it sounds to me like you might be full of shit. At this point, you're doing their job for them. What the f Even if I saw it from their perspective, like even if I removed my brain and replaced it with a little toy monkey with symbols or whatever they have going on up there, Replaced? Even if I saw it from their point of view, if the issue they have with all of this is that I shouldn't be talking about this at a time where gay groomer rhetoric is popular, why aren't they mad at Balenciaga for doing an ad like this at the time the gay groomer thing is popular? For putting a piece of paper in a single photo shoot that you turned into a conspiracy? that you in this very video said went out of control? Why should, why should we blame someone who didn't, like Balenciaga didn't do anything. They're a shitty fucking corporation, but they didn't do a pedophilia. One of their artists put a piece of paper that you and your fans fixated on. And of course, many of your fans went and spun it directly into a, all kinds of demented, violent conspiracy postings. Some of which also attempted to implicate the LGBTQ community. Remember earlier in this video, before I started watching Shu on Head's response, that I read uh, some of these quotes? I'm gonna read one of the quotes from earlier once again. This is Victor Vieth, the Director of Research and Education at the Zero Abuse Project, okay? For some 20 years, we have been fighting back against uh, against that myth, referring to the satanic panic. You know, the D&D, &D, you know, D&D &D and witchcraft, and there's Satanists secretly using product lines to manipulate your children like D&D &D and video games. That one. We, we, we have spent 20 years fighting back against that myth and, myth, and we have made great, great progress. We've got over 900 accredited children's advocacy centers. We have lifted the bar, responding to all forms of trauma treatment. We know what an evidence-based approach is to preventing it. We know what an evidence-based approach is for interviewing a child. We know what an evidence-based approach for preparing a child for court, and we know what's the best practice for securing a conviction against the pedophile. Now, almost overnight, because of the growth of conspiracy, we are back at square one. Yes, Shu, you randomly coming up with conspiracy theories and, and, and uh, randomly accusing people because of your own delusions, your literal own delusions, that is extremely damaging. Yes, it is bad. It's fucking terrible. Because as it turns out, professionals who work in, uh, who work at fighting human trafficking have talked about this type of thing, okay? Hold on a second. I just want to read you this quote. One second. This is probably one of the key things that's attractive about QAnon, said Mark Andre Argentino, a doctoral student at Concordia University who studies QAnon's social media presence. Everyone agrees that child trafficking is very bad, and the argument that QAnon ends up making is, if you're against us talking about this, you are in favor of child trafficking. Can we just play this segment back? At a time where gay groomer rhetoric is popular, why aren't they mad at Balenciaga for doing an ad like this at the time the gay groomer thing is popular? Why aren't they directing their anger at the brand? Why are they shooting the messenger? The worst- Because you messaged a lie. 
because you have been going all over social media, you and your fans, and you've been saying that anyone who points out that you're full of shit, that you made this up and that you accused people who did not do the things that you accused them of, you say that they are assisting or protecting or defending pedophilia. You are literally doing things that storied researchers have written about QAnon doing, that they, that they intentionally conflate your, uh, your personal opinion with the actual issue at hand. I'm gonna get a little personal for a second, okay? Let's just get real for just a moment, all right? I, and I have no evidence for this. This is my personal opinion. Understand, this is my personal opinion. I do not believe that shoe on head, that blood on hands has ever actually had to deal with a situation of human trafficking. I have. I don't think that shoe on head has ever sat down and been ready to pull the trigger on somebody and have the only reason that you stop is because the victim of that person begs you to let them die from their failing liver instead of killing them on the spot. I have a feeling that Shu on Head has never been in that, that Shu on Head is much more comfortable talking about these issues from the distance of the internet, from her comfortable little keyboard in her comfortable little home where she can get everyone else to go spread conspiracy theories that harm victims. I just don't buy it. I don't buy that Shu on Head gives a shit about these issues. I think that Shu on Head gives a shit about her bottom line. And actually, just out of curiosity, oh my god, this this video has 301,000 views since yesterday. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow, almost like her little invent a conspiracy theory while pretending that you give a shit about children while doing what every single professional and expert in the entire world disagrees with. Looks like that's working out for her bottom line. Looks like she's padding her wallet pretty fucking well. It's fun and profitable, right, Shu? Let's continue part about this is that this tweet came from a YouTuber who I've been friends with for years. Why is this person who I thought was my friend do- Can I just address this? Here's a comment from my YouTube chat right now. How was she supposed to know so many people would find her video out of the millions of videos on YouTube? She has 1.9 million followers on YouTube on her primary account. She has two other accounts that have thousands upon thousands of followers. Shoe on head knows how far her stuff reaches. Shu on Head has bragged about her ability to get talking points on Tucker Carlson. She knows. She knows all of this. And you are being manipulated. Doing this unhinged stretch Armstrong reach to imply I am responsible for the murder of LGBT people. This isn't how you would treat a friend. This isn't criticism. Actually, that's not what the tweet says, Shu. I understand that reading comprehension isn't your strong suite, or at least, I bet you can read. I don't think you're actually illiterate. I just think you choose not to. Shu on head on her way to once again use her massive platform to provide neo-Nazis and her audience with fodder they can use to justify the murder of gay people. Nobody, Xander Hall, in the tweet she's showing on the screen, she's showing the tweet and lying to your face showing you the tweet and lying about its contents. This is such a, this is such a bold level of lying. This is such a bold level of manipulation. This isn't a joke, this is disgusting. I just don't understand, like, if you had a problem, why didn't you come to me in private? Why did you have to make it into some public sideshow lit epic dunk for the- You made it a public sideshow, you fucking idiot! What do you mean? You posted about the conspiracy theory without ever doing research. Why didn't you do research on Balenciaga in private and then take it to the fucking FBI? Why didn't you do research on the pedos, quote unquote, at Balenciaga and take it to a charity that fights this shit? Why didn't you take it to a lawyer who specializes in fucking victims of child trafficking? You fuck.
If you gave a shit about any of this, except for your own fucking bottom line, you would have done that. Why didn't you do it in private? The, 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 the victim narrative on hand. Oh, ooh, just a small bean. I just created a widow, a widow conspiracy theory, which I, in this video, admitted ended up with buildings getting vandalized. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Why didn't people talk to me in private? That's pathetic. You are pathetic. You are weak. You are spineless. The world to see. Maybe this is karma, because I've dropped friends over politics before. Because honestly, I can't find any other explanation for this. But this wasn't even political. Like, I couldn't think of an optically worse thing to drop someone over. Why is that? Are you implying? Are you implying that it makes Xander Hall look like a pedophile? Is that what you're implying? Are you trying to imply that because Xander Hall called you out on your shit, that he kind of seems a little bit pedo-like? Wouldn't it be weird if Shoe on Head has done that to a bunch of different people? Wouldn't it be weird if in my other video, I went across multiple tweets in which she implied that the serfs, contra points, and a, and a number of other people also dropped her for pedo shit, which is very normal. That's the words that she used. See, Shoe on Head is a very, is a very nasty individual. You see, if you don't agree with Shoe on Head, she just calls you a pedophile or strongly implies it because see, she doesn't really have the spine to just out and call you a pedophile. She just implies it. Zan's producer says, Zan's comments got raided with people calling him a pedophile after Shoe's vid. Yeah, so did mine. In fact, uh, I, I have them all. It's, I have them all saved, it's really interesting. A lot of people calling me a pedophile. People in this chat today, interestingly, really weird. Really weird. Really weird that uh, the sin of disagreeing with Shu on Head's demented, evidenceless conspiracy theory gets you called a pedophile. Almost seems like there's, you know, almost seems like they're, uh, it's actually about, it's not actually about helping kids. Almost seems like it's about uh, clout and money. Let's continue. Like, I know you used to be right wing. Personally, I can't relate, but not everything related to has to do with gay people. Shu needs to stop with the conspiracy posting. Ah yes, the conspiracy. The conspiracy that the fashion industry is f***ed up and weird. The conspiracy that- No, 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 you manipulative fuck. No, you do not get to do that within two minutes of this, you just said that it was a pedophile conspiracy and that it was pedobating. The conspiracy, this is a open Mott and Bailey. Literally a, 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 a textbook manipulation trick, a trick of rhetoric. You say, well, the conspiracy theory that, that fashion is weird after you just spent a video alleging pedophilia. No one disagrees that the fashion industry is weird. Nobody disagrees that there aren't bad things that happen in the, in the, in the uh, fashion industry. What they disagree with is your fucking invented bullshit about a secret pedophile conspiracy. You fucking slimy worm. Are abusing children. That conspiracy. The worst part is she pretends to be gay so she can yell homophobe when you call her out. I'm convinced Shu has no real political opinions and just says slash believes whatever sounds good to her. Isn't, isn't that what an opinion is? Begging people. Maybe for you, is that a, that's a self report? Maybe for you, you're, you're just, your feels are your political opinions. Other people genuinely try to be more informed than you. That's like a, that's like a massive self-report. Okay. Well, to finally realize Shu is literally just right-wing. Shu is a conservative, no matter how many lefties try to say otherwise. There's a term coined by Lindsay Ellis that I think fits Shu. She's a diet Nazi. <laughs> Shuan Head is a right-wing propagandist. She is likely paid to be so either directly or indirectly. I f***ing hate Shu. She's not a leftist. She's a fascist who wants health care. Does this look like a fascist to you? She needs to be kicked. I just gotta say. Shu's style has really just gotten stale, hasn't it? This video feels like a like a video from like 
2014. She's even using the like old sound effect, the, the, the like beat that she used in her old like videos when she was like a literal kid. I guess this is what stagnation looks like. I guess it is. I guess we've seen what it looks like. out of the left like yesterday. She is a fascist. If you are denying it at this point, you are just a simp. Shu on Head is a right-wing paid propagandist infiltrating leftist spaces. She is a calculated and insincere plant, and she needs to be excommunicated. We need to boot Shu This part right here, like the reading off, reading off random comments that, that like disagree with you, but that don't otherwise prove any point is very interesting. Like, I don't know what the point is here. Is the point that some people were mean to Shu when Shu alleged a pedophile conspiracy that reached international news level? Yeah, uh, some people are going to be mean to you and some people are going to say some unreasonable things. You also started a conspiracy theory that reached international fame with no evidence. It's, it's, it's victim. This is professional, vi professional victim shit. This is like 2014. Look at the SJWs I don't like. From the left, she isn't a leftist. I yeah, isn't it? It's damsel in distress shit. Damn. <laughs> Damn. She all went all the way around back to the gamer day, day, days. Oh no, she took it too seriously. Oh no. Let's At this continue. point, we just have to not let Shu exist on the left anymore. <laughs> Inevitably, she is going to leave the left and it will not be surprising. So first of all, if I was going to leave the left over left-wing people being mean to me, I would have left the left like eight f***ing years ago. I know it's hard for these people to understand because their extent of politics is quite literally Discord servers and Reddit communities. You cannot- That's super ironic coming from you, Shu. That's super fucking ironic coming from you. You've- your entire career has been on YouTube. Your entire po po politics is based on the internet. That doesn't, do you think that's like a own to anybody? Like, okay, y you're a YouTuber. You're a, you're a, you're like a fucking 10 year veteran of YouTube. Your entire career has been on the internet. What are you talking about? Not be kicked out of opinions. Like I could call myself a right winger right now, but I would be the shittiest right winger ever Probably on account of the whole, I don't know, socialism thing? The whole- What?! Oh yeah, shoe on head! The, 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 yeah, Karl Marx-based comrade shoe on head. Definitely known for being a social- a avowed socialist. What are you talking about? Has shoe on head ever? Except for now when it's convenient identified as a socialist As far as I understand it Shu just believes in in and I say this very charitably health care and generally socially progressive policies I Don't think that since when are you a socialist? Do you even know what a socialist means? You believe in a socialized economy? Oh Bernie wasn't a socialist Bernie is a Democrat who appealed to socialists. Bernie was never a socialist. Oh, oh my God. I'm, I'm, I find that very funny personally. <laughs> okay, okay. Being a socialist might get in the way, but more importantly, I don't know- Actually, wait, hold on. Credit, credit, Bernie might have said he was a socialist at one point. Whatever, let's continue. Oh, so, what about me calling shit like this out makes me not left-wing. It genuinely feels like some massive psyop. Like, I want workers' rights and for people to have their basic necessities met. I didn't sign up for this weird-ass shit. I'm just so tired. Socialism isn't when you want people's basic needs met. Christians want people's basic needs met through the church. There, what, what kind of a, what is this? Is this what passes to shoe fans for like political analysis? Apparently being a socialist is when you want people to have their needs met and you also want health care. I 
tired of like trying to prove to these people that I'm left-wing. I'm just tired of being like, no, you don't understand. I voted for Bernie in 2016 and in 2020. I believe this and I believe that. I'm tired. I'm too old. Do you think that it's possible, my lovely viewers, do you think it's possible that perhaps shoe on head, the problem that people have with shoe on head doesn't have anything to do with her saying that she wants health care and instead just maybe, just maybe has to do with the fact that she perpetuates baseless conspiracy theories that end up getting people hurt. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? for this shit. I am exhausted. These people just want me to be some like progressive little shit lib rising from the ashes of like the anti-SJW world. They want me on my hands and knees groveling and a No, no. Uh, these people, I can't possibly be these people, but I can speak right myself as a critic right now. What I want you to do is stop peddling insane conspiracy theories to your gigantic audience and instead make fucking uwu content. Stop fucking Stop fucking talking about things that not only do you not know anything about, but that you actively harm. You harm victims. We opened this stream by reading out a letter put together by well over a hundred organizations that daily, every single day, their entire purpose is to help people escape trafficking, to help kids escape sex trafficking. And they all said the way you do your crap hurts them actively. You know, I don't know, did Shoe on Head get on board with the Wayfair thing? Because if that's the case, then that other person may have been saying that we read just a bit earlier might be specifically referring to shit that Shoe on Head pushed. Yes, she did, she pushed the Wayfair shit. Well, remember what we read? Do you wanna read it again? Here, let me just read it real quick. Oh, this is, this is so, this is gonna be so interesting. Hold on, I wanted to bring this up. Let's read this again, ready? This is from a report by the Polaris Project, one of the most, one, a, a well-recognized uh, uh, anti-child trafficking uh, uh, organization that aims to get children in contact with lawyers so they can fight against it. Let me just read this out. The fallout from disinformation about human trafficking has a profoundly harmful impact on victims and survivors of human trafficking. The amount of time Polaris spent responding to false reports about the Wayfair conspiracy theory could have easily been used to respond to an additional 42 trafficking cases. These were the findings from the organizational study that they did, which I will provide a link to this in the description, but you can also simply just look up Polaris report, the, the Polaris QAnon report. In every objective manner, in every measurable sense, shoe on head, you are hurting children's abilities to escape their abusers. You are actively impeding them. Every single person who actually helps kids is telling you this. You just don't care. It's not about you getting down on your hands and knees and begging for the left. It's about you just shutting the fuck up about this shit. You don't know anything about it, and it's clear you don't actually care about victims. Because if you did care about victims, you would do things differently. Sweet Siren Ain says, I felt really gaslighted about this issue, so listening to this is pretty cathartic to me, not gonna lie. I imagine it's cathartic to a lot of people who've been having to deal with Pepe Sylvia tier conspiracy mongering all over their timeline and people telling them to their face that what they see, or what the, that the evidence in front of them uh, says something different than what it says. Let's continue. Apologizing for making like stupid level one baby edgy jokes about attack helicopters five years ago. They want me saying we need to destigmatize pedophilia or want me simping for the CIA or whatever the f these people are up to nowadays. And it's like, no, not gonna happen. Sorry. What's so funny is a lot of these content creators stigmatize baby edgy from the ashes of like the end. These people are making like stupid level one baby edgy jokes about attack helicopters five years ago. They want me saying we need to destigmatize pedophilia or want me simping for the CIA or whatever. Shu, Shu did an entire segment showing comments against her, and there wasn't even a single one. Even in Shu's cherry-picked comments, there wasn't a single one saying destigmatize pedophilia. That's because Shu on head 
invented that. Shu on head made up a boogeyman, convinced her audience, which apparently does not introspect very much or look into the details, and then convinced everyone that it was real. the f these people are up to nowadays and it's like no not gonna happen sorry what's so funny is a lot of these content creators do agree with me but they won't say so in public like they dm me and they're like oh you're so right instead of just doing it publicly because they fear their own audiences it's this is literal professional victim shit they will punish them I won't show you the DMs. Nobody will actually say it. They're too afraid of them. They're out to get you. Bullshit. Bullshit. Nobody's falling for this. Fuck off. Literally so sad. It's like an abusive relationship. But I just want to go back to the more important, less personal aspect of this whole thing. And that is the connection between and LGBT. So of course there are a lot of people on the right wing who are comparing the two. They have been doing this since the Not just comparing the two, you fool. Directly conflating them. If you go and look at the accounts of any popular right wing person, the biggest channels, they are not just comparing them. They are just saying groomer whenever they want to say LGBT. They are pushing a narrative. They are trying to get other people to adopt a libel because they want gay people gone. I have covered this and talked about this extensively. The groomer narrative is spread all over America right now. This is not some niche issue. It's being pushed by every right wing fucking talking head in the country. It's not just a comparison. I've seen a few fucked up takes for sure, but not gonna lie, I'm pretty uncomfortable with, with the speed at which some people are willing to accuse LGBT people of being pedophiles in all of this discourse. And then Shu replies, they're not pedos, they're useful idiots for pedos. They being literally LGBT people. They, the only they that she could be referring to here is LGBT people. Just so you understand that shoe on head makes us a few little oopsie doopies. You know what we call this? Most people, most rational people would call this a mask slip. But you can never know what's really in somebody's head. Isn't that, isn't that convenient? You can never really know what's in her small bean heart. What's in her little heart? Her tiny heart really loves gay people, but you know, in public, she just accidentally conflates gay people directly with pedophiles or being pedophile and neighbors, enablers and useful idiots for pedophiles. It's not weird. Isn't that fucking weird? Really, really odd. 1950s, the pedo smear has been thrown at gay people for decades. There's always- No, not for decades, for literal centuries. It is an ancient, libel it has never been true people have died for it people are dying for it it has never been true and it hasn't just been for decades notice how how this entire segment is her downplaying been people on the right who will compare all the things i talk about like the maps and stuff to gay people like but it's very clear from my content if you've watched my content which i really don't think a lot of these people who are mad at me have done it's very clear from my content that i've always this one did this one is done this one's doing it right now you can go see my videos i responded to her previous conspiracy nonsense too and we watched it on stream interesting but you know it's funny i've heard i'm in this video i've seen i'm in this video i've seen the bit I've seen a little clip that shows my face in here so i know she's gonna bring me up but I wonder if she watched my videos. I wonder if she bothered reading anything I had to say, or if she's just gonna try and do some sort of weird uh, 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 cope. Pushed back on this. But what is new to me is now liberals coming out and saying I can't talk about this stuff, and that talking about it is somehow inherently anti-gay. Which one you- Let's see him. Let's fucking see the post, you liar. 
Let's see all the liberals who are too afraid to talk about child abuse. Let's see them. Or maybe you just made it up. Maybe you're doing the thing that, profes but that, that professionals who study child abuse said that conspiracy theorists do, where they say, if you disagree with my conspiracy theory, you must be a pedo defender. Oh, wait. Shu's been doing that since the beginning of this shit. Shu always does that. And what did the what what do we remember? I read that thing to you just a minute ago. Do you remember what they said? That that fucking hurts victims. That it hurts victims to fucking fraudulently go around claiming that everyone else is a pedo who doesn't agree with your insane conspiracy theory. You see, this entire video, listen closely, this entire fucking video from Shoe on Head has been trying to convince you that truth does not matter. The entire video has been about that. It's been about convincing you that evidence doesn't matter. All that matters is the vibes were off. Shu felt weird about what happened, and therefore it's okay for her to make up shit. It's okay for her to uh, accuse people of crimes. So. It's just, it's, it's literally feelings over facts. The entire video is trying to convince her audience to not listen to facts, to not look for the facts themselves, to never look into the truth, just to, you know, it's the vibes are off, and everybody else who disagrees with me is being a pedo defender. The thing about it is really, really bad. Shu has never been a leftist. She's a right-wing reactionary trad wife who has an unhealthy obsession with making false equivalences between LGBTQ people and pedophiles. So first of all, let's be well, 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 shoe, well, shoe, you know, I'm just, it is kind of weird that you do have a number of incidences in the past where you've done just that. Now, I have to give a little bit of credit to Shoe on Head, okay, real quick. I just have to be, I just have to give a little bit of credit to Shoe on Head which is that Shu on Head has been very, very good at plausible deniability. Shu, you've been very careful. You've been very careful with your words. You've avoided saying things that directly accuse anyone of everything, of anything. It's a spineless tactic, but it's very, uh, it's very crafty, but it's not gonna last forever. You know that eventually someone is going to sue you for libel. Someone is going to sue you for slander and they're gonna succeed because the shit that you say online is so heinously out of step with reality, with evidence, and you say it so freely. You think you're uwu small bean, but you have a big YouTube channel. We live in the age of the internet now. You make accusations of pedophilia against people and somebody is going to rightfully sue you. I don't want to see shoe on head sued. I don't think that shit works. Obviously, Alex Jones is still on the air and the lawsuits haven't really done anything. Except for, I will say, those lawsuits probably gave a sense of peace to the people involved. But how long can you go around falsely accusing people of pedophilia before somebody gets tired of your shit? This is how I deal with it. See, when I have people uh, say false things in my direction, when I have people's fan base come to me and say lies about me and accuse me of crimes and things like that, I confront it head on because I have a spine, because I'm a big girl, I'm strong, I'm a demon type streamer, the first demon type streamer. I'm very brave and I take things on head on and I deal with them in the marketplace of ideas. Interesting that. But not everybody is into that sort of thing. And laws exist. Yeah, how many judges are going to accept the defense? Well, I was only implying over and over and over and over again and ignoring the parts of my audience that are directly threatening death. Let's continue. Very clear here. I have been doing the opposite of this my entire career. This has been one of my focuses on this channel for years. And do you know what one of the core messages of a lot of those videos were? They are now trying to squeeze themselves into the LGBT community. And do not- So you show a video of you, a video of you blaming gay people, putting the blame on gay people instead of your nonsense. Spear. 
be mistaken. The LGBT community ain't having that shit. You cannot sit with the LGBT community. You can't sit with us! And for the people who go, must slippery slope, you're fueling the delusions that they did actually successfully break their way into the- No, they- no you're not. No one has ever accepted pedophiles as a part of the LGBT community. You made that up. You made it up. And you still push it. And you push it every year without any evidence. You never, you say it happens, but you never show us, you never show it actually happening. You just, like you did in this video, show people disagreeing with you and then heavily imply that they're a pedophile because they disagreed with you. That sounds like the behavior of somebody who wants some money in their pocket. The community. They're latching on a movement that is currently, finally, seeing acceptance, which makes them snakes. There's a literally nothing more dangerous about pedophilia than any other sexual attraction when you think about it. Who is that? Who is this person? What is this contextless noise? That guys, there is no difference between an adult consensually having sex with another adult and an adult having sex with a child. Amazing! We learned so much on this channel! But right now, since gays and transgender people have already gotten much of their rights all throughout the world, I think it's time for pedophiles to have their turn. This is Amos Lee, a far-right pedophile. Why would you ever imply that Amos Lee, a far-right pedophile troll, is a member of the LGBT community? Why would you, unless you were trying to be manipulative? Damn. It's very weird. Did I say Lee? I said Yee, didn't I? Amos Yee? Amos Yee. Is this her trying to make it out like she battled the pedos? This is just a random clip of Amos Yee. Ah! <laughs> oh, shut up! Shut up! This right here is what triggers my timbers. Gay consenting adults can do whatever they want with other gay consenting adults. A pedophile's sexuality. Children aren't a gender, so it's not a sexuality, but like I've, like I've said before, cannot go through with their sick fetish without harming anybody. Speaking as a gay man, I believe we should include the P. To do otherwise is to betray the principles that give us our rights. 2018 tweet that got 18 likes from some random guy who we don't even know who this is. What is any of this? She's just playing, is this guy even a right winger? Is Dr. James Cantor a left winger? Who are these people? Who the fuck are these people? For the last f***ing time. You can't sit with us! James Cantor is an open transphobe? This is Shu trying to imply she's kept the LGBT people separate from the pedos? Except for when she says that anybody who disagrees with her is being a useful idiot, which she's done multiple times in this video. My main point in a lot of those videos was, you can't sit with us. James Cantor is a conversion therapist. The person she just showed is not a, is not like a leftist or a member of the LGBT community. It's a gay conversion therapist. Why is she playing clips from her own older videos? Let's continue. Nearly a decade of content of me going, this is really bad, the LGBT community isn't defending this, only for a chunk of the left to suddenly go, stop right there, Hitler. Shoot now. Oh, wait a minute, that's interesting now. It's weird that she says now a good chunk of the left when she just played videos that she pretended to say, for at least one of them, only in one of them, did she actually say that she doesn't think that LGBT people are pedos. The other ones, she just kind of loosely implied it without actually saying it, and now she's saying a sizable chunk of the left is defending, is saying that you're Hitler, implying once again with no spine that you're a pedophile defender for disagreeing with her. Never seems to go after right-wing shit. I wonder why that is. Okay, I only make maybe like, what, five videos a year? It shouldn't be that hard to go on. L. 
That's your own problem. Onto my page and scroll and just see this video, which is about exactly that. Like it's right there. You don't even have to scroll. It's just, it's right there. Like I made my prostasia video about a year ago. Remember my prostasia video where I ex Your prostasia video where you failed at research because you have, isn't this funny? Of course, I talk about this in my response to her prostasia video. Uh, fun fact. Shuan Head had personal beef with one of the members on the board of Prostasia. And because of her personal beef with one of the members on the board of Prostasia, uh, uh, Shuan Head made a video just machine gunning out false claims about the, or the orga organization. Now, I think there are issues which I outline extensively in my video about this, but Shuan Head dissed and, and spread misinformation about an entire organization because one person that she had personal beef with worked there. Weird. Weird. So fucking manipulative. Expose some child protection organization. What if I posted that video today? Would I be bombarded with these same people and called a Nazi and a reactionary and whatever? Because the only people that were doing that last year was the organization itself. The organization was calling me alt-right for exposing them. Actually, no. It was calling your fans alt-right. Again, reading comprehension, shoe on head, except it's not reading comprehension. You are being manipulative. Prostasia is again undergoing a wave of alt-right attacks. A reminder, we will block those sending abusive comments. This does not mention Shu. And unless Shu is admitting to making attacks, which would be a self-report. That's you. That's you right now. It's a pattern from Shu that she had for years. Even though she didn't say gay groomer out loud, it can be seen as a dog whistle. Shu may not have said anything about LGBTQ plus people out loud, but we can hear the dog whistle from miles away. Shu knows exactly what she's doing. 31 year old knows exactly what she's doing. That's the thing. She did not mention gay and trans people. We know that she is thinking it and so does her audience. It's called a dog. This is just a, an opinion. This is just somebody sharing their opinion. What is this? What is so bad about this comment? This is just a YouTube comment saying they think you're lying. And you know what? Don't they have good reason to think you're lying? This whole video has been you trying to convince your audience to not even look into the truth. Maybe a lot of people don't trust you because you're a fucking liar dog whistle. She hides behind technically not saying anything explicit. Stop falling for her dog whistling tactic. Just because she didn't say gay doesn't mean that it's not what she's implying. The sheer amount of people who still don't- Yeah, do you think it was because she got like ratioed by that one or something? No, that shoe on head is a dog whistle. Her name is a dog whistle. By the way, this type this section is titled Useful Idiots. It always was. It's so funny to me that you can literally breathe and these people will find a way to make it a dog whistle. But a child could be holding a teddy bear in bondage gear in a fashion ad and they call you a crazy conspiracy theorist. An interesting and manipulative pivot. That's very, very interesting there. I mean, of course, we've already addressed all these, but that's an interesting little, uh, that's an interesting little shift you've pulled off there. Just for pointing it out. And they love to do this gaslighting shit, right? They try to make you feel crazy for thinking something like most normal people would think is weird is weird. Literal soup brain. Leather isn't innately related to BDSM. What's wrong with a child seeing BDSM gear? The child does not know it's sexual. It's not BDSM gear. There was no BDSM gear in that entire thing. There was a spiky piece of leather. I'm sorry, that's not BDSM gear. BDSM gear is f flogs and whips that say the daddy dominator. Uh, BDSM gear is a leather, a, a, a leather and silk fuck couch. Uh, uh, BDSM gear is a, a, a sex swing suspended in your basement. A stylized piece of leather that has spikes on it is not BDSM gear. Even if it reminds 
you of BDSM gear. You're projecting your own sexuality onto a piece of leather. Now, if that child had been in a room with a bunch of sex toys, we might be having a very different conversation, but that's not what happened. It was a teddy bear with a leather harness with some spikes on it, and that's it. You are the Pepe Sylvia. You are the Pepe Sylvia. What harm comes from this? Who gives a shit, dude? It's a kid- Wait, that's a, that's a really good question. What harm does come from any of this? You notice that this entire conversation, Shoe on Head, has not yet elucidated what harm has been done to anyone. She won't claim that children were harmed because, to our knowledge, there was no child abuse going on in any of these things. That these were legal photo shoots where the children were not predated upon in any way. What harm was done here? What's the harm? You see, harm is really important to ask a question about because um, if somebody's not harming someone else, why are you mad about it? What are you mad? What are you actually? What's the? Where is the harm? What is the damage that's being done? And she never answers that question because answering that question requires being honest about facts. But the facts are not in Shuan Head's favor, so she just ignores and implies the harm. Harm is a really important question to ask. Not know it's sexual, what harm comes from this? Who gives a shit, dude? It's a kid holding a teddy bear. How traumatizing. People love to misunderstand fashion. It's so tiring. <laughs> it's not pedophilia, it's fashion, mom. Look it up. It's putting- So again, notice the sleight of hand there. She just did it again. Now it's pedophilia again. First it was sussy vibes, then it was pedophilia, then it was pedophilic baiting, then it was, oh, actually, I, I just think it's a little weird again, and now she's back to pedophilia. She's been jumping between what's actually going on without ever actually saying for sure which one it is. She just goes, <laughs> she just does a little, she does this, <laughs> and she makes a little joke that implies something, but never actually says it. Dog BDSM too. This child is not being mutilated. It is just hey, hey, it's me. Hey, it's me. Wait a second. What the fuck is this? What the fuck is this shit? Why would you blur out my my art, but then leave the link to my website down here? Oh, you are so fucking bad at this. Shoot, no, is this ineptness or was this intentional? I guess we'll never know, will we? We'll never know. Why would you blur my art, but not my fucking link to my website? What the fuck? Also, let's see, can we just see, I wanna hear what, what her cope is here. What, why is she bringing up my video? Hold on. Why is she bringing up my video? Harness on a dog, BDSM too. This child is not being mutilated. It is just holding a bear that happens to have a leather strap on it. Petco.com. Oh no, they're selling pedophile wear. I'm sorry, you can't. <laughs> I was right, you bitch. I was fucking right and you know it. Didn't, don't you wear a choker in half of your videos? Don't you wear a little BDSM heart choker? You fucking fraud. You fucking joke. How many fucking videos right now could we pull up right now on your channel where you're wearing an explicit BDSM choker? That's more than the bears, you fuck. She was in a very public BDSM relationship while having minor fans. Interesting. Now, because I'm not an insane conspiracy theorist, I don't think that that is anything harmful. I don't think there's any harm that comes from shoe on head wearing a fucking uh, choker. But shoe on head does. By shoe on head's own standards, she's full of fucking shit. And she knows it. She fucking knows it. Damn, that, that must have really bothered her. That must have really bothered her. Enough that she put me in the chapter that's titled Useful Idiots. Useful Idiots for Pedophilia. Isn't that fucking scummy? Isn't that motherfucking scummy?
Because I called her on her shit. Because I got a good ass burn in. Now she wants her fans to think I'm a pedophile. Oh, and by the way, maybe now would be a good time to bring up all of the images. Uh, all of the images of people from her community immediately after she posted the, uh, immediately after she posted this video flooding into my comments to call me a pedophile. Here we go. Here, let me just, you know what, you know what, let's, let's just do it. Let's bring a couple of these up, shall we? Oh, oh, and ooh, ooh, and the transphobia too. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget that. Hold on a second. Ooh, ooh, this is going to be really interesting. This is going to be so much fun. Oh, this person did a ton. Oh, oh, this one did, oh, this is going to be good. Oh my god, we have so many. Here we go. I'll read you just some of the comments that came in after, um, after the video. <laughs> All right, you guys ready? You guys ready to see these with your own eyes? Okay, let's take a look. Here we go. Let's start with the first one. Demon Mama, you're looking too far into things, hun. And yo, you're defending Balenciaga? How map of you. That's weird. That's really weird. So because I, because I looked too deep, even though that's what they're doing, they're rabbit holing. I looked too deep, and that makes me a pedophile. Hmm, interesting. Let's continue. Let's see another one. Oh, this one was fun. This one wasn't a pedophile thing. This one was just a, well, it was implied. You know, kind of like Shu does. Are you non-binary? And I replied, I am, yes. And you're expecting people to take you seriously when talking about this topic? Hey, I wonder what that could mean. I wonder what the, uh, what, what do you guys think that means? What do, you, what do you think they're trying to say there? This is on my Balenciaga video, by the way. I wonder what they're trying to imply there. Oh, here's a fun one, ready? Maybe you're allowing personal judgment to cloud your judgment because posing kids in photo shoots with kink gear. The children were not posed with kink gear. There was a leather strap on a bear is pretty objectively she skeevy. Literally just don't exploit children in photo shoots with kink stuff. That's what's being asked of people. I know this is hard for you to understand, but she is an adult. Children in Balenciaga's photos are children. They cannot possibly consent to posing with I in kink. To be honest, this video is more of a red flag on Demon Mama than it is of Shu. Demon Mama thinks the children of uh, the photos of chil of children posing are okay. Let's go to the next one, shall we? Oh, this this person was fun. This is a really special fan. You'll notice they actually didn't just comment on my Shoe on Head video. They went and put these things on my other videos. Here we go. Let's read these ones out. Oh, it's just a leather strap on a teddy bear. It is a leather strap on a teddy bear. No, that was legit BDSM wear. You're a pedo enabler for defending that degenerate shit, you retard. Okay, pedophile. How come you endorsed pedophilia? Watch, watch how you use groomer logic. Should we go some more? You look like somebody who probably grooms kids. Wouldn't be shocked to be honest considering you support pedophilia. Dean Mama, you seem pretty predatory. I hope you're not around kids. Here we go, here's another one. Mad respect for being openly delusional. This was me responding to Xander Hall, uh, who commented on one of my videos. It's the same thing with the cuties thing. I don't, I didn't talk about cuties in any of my videos. I'm beginning to think a lot of your people I wonder what they mean by your people, huh? Are just closet kid fiddlers yourself because the only time you people come out of the woodworks is whenever something obviously sus is called into question. The company itself called it weird and said it was a mistake, but because you psychopaths live in a world where your psychosis reigns supreme, you purposely connect things that aren't connected and connected. People like you is why the left is not taken seriously and the alternative right continues to have the chokehold it has. You make it hard to be a liberal. Huh. Here we go, here's another one. Demon Mama, upon looking at the photo of a child with a, de with a bondage bear, pretty normal photo shoot. Demon Mama then describes the second photo with another bondage bear, the one with a pink eye, I don't know what they were talking about with that, as a goth bear and thinks the assortment of chains and leashes lying around is a nothing burger because that's what the company sells. And let's ignore how weird it is to have a child posing with any of this crap. You fucking dumb asshole. You fucking stupid cunt. Balenciaga makes pet leashes. They make pet collars, you fucking idiot. 
Prior to this video, I just thought BreadTube was giving June the monkey paw treatment in interpreting all of this, but now I think it's actively malicious. Hmm. Because Demon Mama is so disingenuous and thinks these photos are nothing of concern, it makes me concerned about Demon Mama's moral compass. BreadTube has a skeeve problem. That's just a small selection of the comments that I've received alleging me without any evidence only for disagreeing with Shoe on Head, calling me a pedophile. And Shoe on Head was so nice as to include my clip in the useful idiots section of her video about pedophilia. Or I should say about her invented pedophile conspiracy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. I want to read this one real quick, okay? Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Okay? Here we go. This is, these are some comments that were, uh, that were sent to me. This is comments from her video now, okay? So we did my video. We did re replies that were sent directly to me. Now let's see what it's like on her video. What's it like being a Nazi, says one person, and one of her fans replies, based, are you pro-pedophilia? Interesting. That's a little weird one, isn't it? Isn't it weird to, to have people in your audience that say that being a Nazi is based? That seems really fucking weird. Shu said things against child molesters. This is anti-gay. Hit dogs holler, as they say. There you go. Another one accusing anyone who disagrees with her of being a pedophile. Because they see zero issue with sexualizing children if they think it aligns with the political left or gay right somehow. Hmm. Damn, that got a lot of likes on her video. Damn. The fact that they're fighting you so hard over it speaks volumes about how protected groomers currently are in society. Remember that part that I read earlier where all the professionals said that conspiracy theorists say that if you disagree with them you're a pedophile and that's how they push their agenda interesting here we go oh this one's interesting i can't believe that little gremlin hey excuse me i'm not a gremlin i'm a demon i'm much scarier than a gremlin should have never gotten the access to makeup dad was just so right Oh, nice. I love that. Who did this? Or were they women and therefore have female privilege and no need for any consequence? Wait, so basically they're defending pedos? Funny there are people that want to throw a pee onto the LGBT. Wow, it just keeps going on, doesn't it? Maybe if the LGBT community is constantly defending pedos. Yeah, that ha that's, that's weird. That's a weird thing to say, isn't it? I, I never hear anybody defending pedos. Ever. There's actually, maybe if they're, if they're constantly defending pedos, there is actually a connection between the two. You will be considered on the alt-right if you do not accept the pedos. The slippery slope was never a fallacy. Wow. Wow, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty mask off, isn't it? Just how hard they are fighting shows what their real colors are. I can't believe these people think they're on the side of good when they're propagating the exact false equivalents they claim to decry. It's like I said, if avarice is bad, find properties beyond the pursuit of wealth, and they come back with being stop being anti-Semitic. Well, that's a very weird one you came up with there, my friend. Twitter is so full of pedo LGBT propaganda, it's laughable. Hmm. The people defending this are the same people taking their children to pride parades. That's a little weird one, too. They're the ones who made the connection to pedophilia, not you. We already established that's not true. You can't cry about people linking those two if you won't do it. If you hear a dog whistle, you're a dog. Here is I hate f I'm quoting. Here is I hate F slurs saying, love you, Shu. Here we have Shu, you must understand that pedophiles are the new gay. LGBTP. Still groomers, more gays are groomers than aren't. Interesting. The LGBTQ plus community is aligning themselves with CP and pedos. Is all the ammunition the right needs to say that the LGBTQ community aligns themselves with CP and pedos? Shoe on head and Matt Walsh are being clumped together. I love it. Not sure how people who are defending children are Nazis. I'd like that explained. You know. You know. It's really interesting. See, uh, we have, we, we can, we can choose some comments too. And it's weird because, uh, the comments that Shu on head threw up were things that made her feelings hurt. You know, oh, I don't like it when they call me a right wingo. I don't like it when they say they don't want me around them because I'm a, a wire. And what do we find? Her fans just spewing false allegations of the worst crime you can imagine. Her fans, 
her fans just go around accusing people of the worst crimes you can imagine. And it's no surprise that they especially latched on to the fact that she put me in the video because I'm very openly LGBTQ. And you wanna know what else is going on at this time right now? There is a libel, a nationwide aggressive libel against LGBT people that accuses all LGBTQ people of being groomers. There are the most popular right-wing pundits explicitly lie. Tim Pool, who is one of the most popular political streamers in the world, I don't know if he's gonna make it through this latest one though, because his fans are very mad at him, interestingly, for pushing back on anti-Semitism. It's a very weird thing. But Tim Pool literally said that an event in which there was no child harmed was a grooming event. No evidence. Just said it right after there was a shooting that killed five innocent people and injured 20 more innocent people. Now are we starting to get the picture why I call her blood on hands? Are we starting to get the picture now? Look at her fucking audience. If that type of shit was in my audience, not only do I know that you motherfuckers would tear the absolute motherfucking shit out of that, but I would too. And I do. Nobody pushes that shit in my name, but Shoe on Head just lifts her hands up and says, oops, oopsies, I accidentally intentionally created a conspiracy theory. Pathetic. Let's continue. Calm. Oh no, they're selling pedophile wear. I'm sorry, you can't fool a degenerate. That is a BDSM harness. Maybe shoe. Do you see what I said about the projection? Do you see what I said? She can only see a strap of leather. Shoe on head sees a strap of leather, leather and goes, that's, it has to be BDSM. Even though we just found a product that looks identical, sold for dogs, not for sexual purposes, at Petco. That is her problem. That is her projection. That is her pathological fixation on sexuality. And I honestly think that maybe Shoe on Head should take it to a therapist instead of blasting it out into conspiracism on the internet. Shoe on Head sees a piece of leather next to a child and starts- Oh, oh, wait a minute. Oops. She's going to play me saying that. a little, you know, riled up. Maybe it's a little bit of projection on Shoe on Head's part. <laughs> okay. I didn't know that she played this part. <laughs> oh, you think this looks weird? Well, you must be a pedophile yourself. You don't like it, do you? Hey, hey, shoe on head. Hey, shoe on head. How come you only played that bit of the video? How come you didn't go back and watch the actual video with your fans? How come you, how come you picked out the one joke I made? The part where I say, I bet shoe on head wouldn't like it if it was done to her. If you literally just roll it back, I literally just say, man, I bet it would feel bad for shoe on head to be subject to her own rhetoric. What an idiot. What a loser! She's literally molding and so salty! That's it! The best she could come up with! You wanna know why she chose those bits? Because she can take those out of context without it making her look bad. If she selected another part of the video where I was ripping into the facts of her idiotic claims, she wouldn't be able to do that. Literal, literal clip chimp. She mad. Damn. She mad. Good. Fuck you. Wow, got him. This shit went viral on like normie Twitter and Facebook and TikTok. There were like- Uh-oh, uh-oh everybody. Uh-oh everybody. Uh-oh, I've just been sent yet another image of Shoe on Head posting to thousands of her fans, many of whom are children, pictures of her in literal bondage gear. Uh-oh, oh no, everybody. Oh shit, it, oh no, a second hypocrisy is striking the shoe. Oh no, uh-oh, everybody. Yikers! Yikers! Looks like shoe on head should be the, the subject of the next pedo hunting. What is she hiding? What is shoe on head hiding from us all? You know, 
it's really interesting. All these idiots, these, uh, these, these political people, you know, shoe on head, I think she's an NPC. But I gotta wonder, what's she hiding underneath the table? What's she hiding from the rest of us? On her Instagram, she's just posting BDSM to her many, many followers? What's really going on at Shoe on Head headquarters? This has been InfoWars with Alex Jones. Boomer girls on TikTok like, Oh my god, this shit crazy. For real, for real. This shit not bussin'. And you're over here pretending it's perfectly fine and not weird and only Nazis and pedophiles would have a problem with this. Okay. Just reject the evidence of your eyes and ears. Balenciaga. It's super ironic that you would say that, seeing as how this entire video has been you telling people that if they disagree with your claims, they are intrinsically defending pedophiles, you slimy fuck. You have me making fun of you in the useful idiots for pedophilia segment, you disgusting, slimy piece of shit. Can we acknowledge this chat? Can we acknowledge that this motherfucker is literally doing exactly that? Literally, fr it's, <laughs> yeah, she's trying to frame me. I better pathetic. be paying you people good because if they're not, that's even more pathetic. They should at least throw you like one of those $3,000 high heeled Crocs or whatever the f like the brand itself even admitted it was weird, yet you're over here. The brand threw their artist under the bus because you freaks tried to cancel them over it. I don't give a fucking shit about Balenciaga, but you trying to pretend that the brand agreed with you when you're literally defending the corporate tactic by which they censor their own employees. Your insane mob got them to fire their artist and you're celebrating like that you're celebrating it like it makes you right? Pathetic. Run in defense for them for free. Even more annoying than the gaslighting has to be the whataboutism. You want to talk about gaslighting. Listen, all of you who are watching this right now, this video is an expose in real time of shoe on heads gaslighting. And by the way, this video is gonna go out tomorrow, okay? And tomorrow, it's going to be called shoe on head fans won't watch this. And it's true, they won't. But if they did, they would realize that gaslighting is exactly what shoe is trying to pull here. This entire fucking video has been her trying to convince people to not actually analyze the facts and instead ride with her on her feelings adventure. I see whataboutism all the time when I make content. When I talk about police brutality, what about violence against police officers? When I talk about men being cringe, what about women being cringe? When I talk about women being cringe, what about men being cringe? You can always tell when someone doesn't really have- Quick fact check too. As Danny says, Balenciaga closed their Twitter days before this photo shoot even went live. They put out a press release saying that they closed their Twitter because they didn't want to deal with Elon Musk and the security issues there. Shu is lying to you. All of you, every last one of you, is being lied to by this slimy little fuck. Have a point or they are low-key defending the thing you're talking about when they do this what about, what about, what about, what about shit. And every time you want to talk about weirdo shit involving children, there's like 12 motherfuckers that crawl out- Now, notice again, once again, just calling attention to it, weirdo shit about children. Now it's not pedophilia anymore. Now it's weirdo shit. Which is it? Which one is it? Are children being are children being systematically abused? Or is it not? Oh. Oh, why do I even try? The only reason that you would ever flip-flop like this is if you didn't actually care and were trying to avoid being sued. Let's just be real about that. The reason why she moves all over the place and she euphematizes everything and uh or sorry, euphemizes everything uh is because it lets her avoid getting sued. It lets, peop it lets her avoid the responsibilities of her actions. That's it. That's the only reason. It's because it makes her money. 
If she actually cared about child abuse, she would be saying there is pedophilia going on every time. But every time she has to make a specific claim, she deftly avoids using the terminology she uses indirectly before. It's super, super manipulative. Of a rock, like, notice how they never talk about child beauty contests. All this political theater from you, yet not one mention of banning child beauty pageants. All this outrage, but nothing about child beauty pageants. Hmm. Oh yeah? You're talking about this bad thing? What about this other bad thing? What is this, the old- It's really weird that she followed up my segment, that, that she puts clips of me before talking about this, and just never says what I supposedly did wrong. What was wrong about what I said? What was wrong about what I said? At all? Huh? Oh, that's right. She just says I says people said other things. She's just vague. She didn't actually review my video. If she reviewed my video, she would know there are no whataboutisms in my video. My case was very clear. In fact, I rewatched my video this morning just to make sure that my case was very clear. And it was. You can go watch it for yourself. Because unlike Shu, I'm not a coward. All lives matter, a f***ing pedophilia? Multiple things can be bad at once. But it's not 2005. We're not middle-aged mothers from the South. Nobody is out here defending child beauty. Pageants. This is so weird because Shu has talked about kink and BDSM in her videos before. She's a hypocrite. I could be wearing a full BDSM harness right now. I could be wearing a full gimp suit, but it would not matter because my content is not made for children. I am an adult. Is Balenciaga's content made for children? Your, your videos aren't age restricted. You know there's kids in your audience, right? You know there's been kids in your audience, especially when you used to create and be a little bit more open about it, huh? You think your silly SpongeBob memes are targeted at adults? Interesting. Adult who makes content for adults. You either have a room temperature IQ or you're coping. She was Catholic, but never calls out the- Oh, yeah. It's everyone else who's coping. Definitely not Shu on head who's coping. Definitely not. The pedophilia of the Catholic Church. Has June ever talked about pedophilia in the church? I can't find her mentioning it. And again, these people don't watch my content. Hell, I even had a joke about it in my prostasia video. It's literally tax exempted. It is a tax exempted pedophile club. You hear that, by the way? Yeah, Shu on Head alleged very directly that the uh, that the organization Prostasia is a pedophile club with no evidence of that, no evidence that pe that there was uh, that that it was a pedophile club. It is an organization that she disagrees with, that I disagree with in some levels, but there is no evidence whatsoever, not at all, that this organization is a pedophile club. She made that up. And look at how she just glazes over it. Accusations change like... So it's a church. Also oh, oh, wow. Wow, Shu. What a, what a killer call out. Do you know how many children have been systemically abused in the church? Interestingly, the church, part of the reason why the church has so many issues with pedophilia and child abuse is because churches are communities. Their ch churches are trusted communities. People are supposed to be able to trust their priest. They're supposed to be able to trust their, their pastor. There's no secret conspiracy going on at these churches. Well, there is some. There's a little bit. And by that, I mean some people are covering for other people. But they're not hooked in with the world's biggest brands. They're not, uh, you know, secretly in control of the White House. It's just mundane, ch mundane, the worst, most horrible type of child abuse. It is adults who are in positions of trust and power in their community using that to abuse kids. And you just, but I'm glad you were able to expose this with your single joke about churches. Remember cuties? 
Remember when Cuties came out? Cuties, which, much like the Balenciaga thing, had nothing to do with LGBT people. And like a dozen articles came out from liberal journalists about how like everyone criticizing it is alt-right. Cuties, the extraordinary Netflix debut that became the target of a right-wing campaign. What's, wait, is she gonna actually read the article? I would be willing to bet that the New Yorker denounces the film. And also, what does this have to do with anything? What does any of this, what does the cutie shit have to do with anything? Oh, Shu on Head's current boyfriend says that, that abuse within the church is a KKK talking point. Oh, that's curious. The yeah, wait a minute. This is a whataboutism. The great irony is that she's doing a whataboutism in her segment where she was mad about whataboutisms. For real? Controversy surrounding it seems to be propaganda fueled by non types and anti Semites. Audiences hate it because there's a moral panic right wing campaign. Oh, yeah, this is the person that she has a beef with, by the way. This, you notice know, this account, I just happen to know this because I uh, pay attention to things and actually look into evidence. This account right here is the person who also uh, is a part of Prostasia. They are not all of Prostasia at all. They are one person at Prostasia. Shuan Head has had a years long beef with this person. This is that person coming up again, just so that we're clear, just so you understand the level of derangement that Shuan Head is on right now. Targeting it. Wrong. Leftists like Shu on Head and Vosh are critical of the film. Shu on Head is a notorious alt right asshole. Hit my own. I am Adolf Hitler! Okay, I'm sorry. I did not mean to press my sound bar barred with either of those. I apologize. Also that was literally just. I, I hit two buttons at once. That was. That was. Again, I really need to move the Hitler one. But there you go. Have a little chuckle. An unintentional chuckle. I wish I had written that joke. Uh. Oh, you just tagged two aggressive, horrible accounts. Please delete that tweet. You're putting people on the thread at risk. And was Cuties not basically beauty pageant shit? It had nothing to do with gay people. And once again, we were calling it out. And where were you? Calling us f***ing Nazis. It doesn't f***ing matter. Who are you talking to? Who are you addressing, Shoe on Head? I just want to... Just, just draw one more piece of attention here. Have you noticed how in this video I have been very specific with my allegations? That I've been very specific to make my case against Shoe on Head, Shoe on Head's actions, and when it's necessary, demonstrate that Shoe on Head's audience has a problem? Shoe on Head just vaguely says you. Interestingly, after putting my face on the video, despite the fact that my my video about shoe on head lays out a very structured case that is evidenced for what I believe. And also, I do roast her at the end. She got real mad about that part. Isn't that fucking weird? Just literally go fighting ghosts, but she's fighting ghosts, but she has put my face on her ghosts to her audience. Almost like She's trying to frame me for things. Almost like she's trying to imply to her audience that the only person whose face and name she shows in the video, mine, is doing all of these things. Even though I didn't do basically any of these ones. The only one that she had me on was the clip and there wasn't even a, there wasn't even an actual argument there. So strange. Yeah, it's very curious how everyone who disagrees with her is a monolith, but anyone who supports her is a lone wolf that she can't do anything about. Isn't that fucking interesting? Matter. It doesn't fucking matter if it's gay or straight. It doesn't fucking matter if it's a giant corporation or a Netflix movie. They or a YouTuber named Shoe on Head. They will find a way to call me alt-right for talking about this shit. The absolute urgent- Nope. People call you alt-right because of the way that you talk about this shit. They call you alt-right because of the people you associate with. They call you alt-right because of your style of disinformation. 
They call you alt-right because you refuse to denounce literal, open transphobes, homophobes, and Nazis in your audience. That's why people call Shu alt-right. Let's be real. There's a lot of reasons why people uh, call Shu alt-right, but those are some pretty major reasons. People don't trust Shu on head because over the years, some people, uh, 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 apparently not her core audience, but some people have wisened up to her manipulation. Over and over and over again, we see shoe on head ignite a moral panic and then go, ooh, woo, small bean. Ignite a moral panic, ooh, woo, small bean. Ignite a moral panic, ooh, woo, small bean. Over and over and over again. And people are fucking tired of it. People are tired of your fucking shit. It's played out. It's boring, it's stale, and it's harmful. and ease at which these people jump on the most optically disastrous swords is both- This is interesting also. Notice how she seems to imply that being clear about the facts is jumping on an optical sword. Isn't that an interesting little setup? So it's, it's a little trap, it's a rhetorical trap. She lies, if you say she's lying, well then you're jumping on an optical sword because you're defending pedos. See, she's not, that's the argument. There is no, like how, there is no other way to interpret that argument. She makes an allegation, anybody who argues against it is taking an optical sword because they're siding with pedos. She's the one setting up that framing. You are, Shu. You're the one doing it. Big Joel criticized Shu for these exact things like a year ago, yet we didn't listen until now. Uh, many people listened. I, I've done a video where I criticize her for these things. I was just more charitable to her in the past because I wanted to hope that it wasn't cynical. That it was mostly just sloppiness. But I don't believe that anymore. I don't, I have, there is, there is no more charitability in my heart. It's been dried up. And interestingly, so has it in for, for pretty much everybody else. A lot of fucking people are, are just done being mass gaslit by shoe on head. Shoe on head literally putting tweets up that contradict what her mouth is saying. While she's saying, tweet said this. And on the screen, you can see that it doesn't. It's a fucking flex. She's flexing on you. And by you, I mean... Those of you who still watch Shu uncritically. Both horrifying and incredible to me. The term map went from something on Tumblr that I talked about seven years ago to now real hired academics using the term. Um, stigma against maps is a problem in part because it makes maps think that they're monsters. Um, that's really problematic in terms of map well-being. Um, it's really hard to cope when you think you're a terrible person uh, because you have attractions that you can't change. And I'm a licensed professional counselor and sex therapist in Erie, Pennsylvania. And today I want to talk about minor attracted persons. Keep in mind, by the way, this is a second whataboutism. This is the second whataboutism. After she just did a, sec a segment getting mad at random YouTube commenters for doing whataboutisms, shoe on head, the content creator has now done two entirely whataboutisms to two random people chopped out of context saying that they, that they think that you shouldn't demonize people who haven't offended yet. That's, that's what that guy just said. The, the guy before said, we don't want, we want people who find out, who realize they have a problem to go get help and not to offend. That's what they were saying. And now she's using that as a, as a part of a whataboutism to distract from the actual point. What the fuck? What the fuck? Just end, endless, just endless lies, endless manipulation. Most folks are making incorrect assumptions about them without actually knowing much about them. And those assumptions create harm for an already marginalized population. Notice the familiar language they're using. They are co-opting progressive language. And I want the community, I want people. Were they? Was that 
a co-option of progressive language? I didn't see any progressive language there. All I heard was two people laying out an argument that, uh, alleged, uh, that uh, ostensibly Shu on Head disagrees with. Like, I don't know anything about these people. By, by Because of her video, we can't know anything about these people. We only get to see a random clip. We don't know anything about these people otherwise. We don't know why they say the things that they said, what the context was. Just out of context, something that that she doesn't agree with. Was it because somebody said marginalized? Is that per, is that really is that all is that word alone progressive language? Huh? People in general. The Godfather says, this is the longest 28 video minute video ever uploaded onto YouTube. Yeah, you want to know what sucks? What sucks is that, uh, that ooh-woo, little liar, manipulative people like Shoe on Head can make a video just vomiting out lies. And people like myself, who in this video are framed for things that I did not say and are, and are, uh, and are called a useful idiot for pedophiles, which fuck you. Absolutely motherfucking fuck you, you keyboard warrior, loser, piece of shit. We have to spend fucking hours going over this fucking garbage. Let's keep going. ...to get ahead of this. But no, apparently MAP is just a right-wing psyop, and I'm just a reactionary, and blah 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 blah. I feel like the crazy side- Again, keep in mind, this is a whataboutism. This is not what the rest of the video is about. She just pivoted to talking about maps for some reason. Why? What does that have to do with Balenciaga? What? Scientist ...in the beginning of a disaster movie that nobody believes, and then it's like too late. And what's upsetting to me, as a socialist, what's upsetting to me is the progressive movement, or whatever this is, I don't even know what this is, in the near future is going to want- Why would you call it a progressive movement? Did any of those people that you just said say they were progressives? Did I miss something? Or are you just making it up again? Or is Shu just- making it up again wind up at the least ignoring and at the most defending some real disgusting shit in the near future in fear of giving the right ammo there are right wing real quick real quick one more time one more time okay we're just gonna read it one more time okay one more one more I read this at the beginning, but I want to make sure that everybody who's here, who's here gets this. This is from a letter of well over a hundred of the world's largest and most respected anti-human trafficking organizations. You do not score political points on the backs of human trafficking survivors, and you do not lie about human trafficking to scare voters. We are in this together. Instead of actively propagating or silently condoning disinformation that harms trafficking victims and survivors and dismantles years of bipartisan cooperation, we offer the real facts about human trafficking. The majority of trafficked youth have been abused or neglected, have run away or do not have stable housing, or are immigrant children fleeing violence in their home countries. They are the youth that we as a society have failed. They are not abducted by strangers or Hollywood elites. They are abandoned by failing and under-resourced systems. Any time we spend engaging these lies necessarily distracts from the real work needed to combat human trafficking. On behalf of, under, of an underfunded and nonpartisan field dedicated to ending the horrific form of exploitation and abuse and helping those who have survived it, we urge you to engage real needs rather than politically motivated and profoundly dangerous narratives that harm the very people who they claim to be speaking for. Victims, survivors, children, family, and vulnerable communities. And I'll just scroll through again so you yourself can see every single organization that signed off on this letter. You're not helping anybody, Shoe on Head. 
You're propagating conspiracy theories. You are a YouTuber who doesn't, who couldn't fucking research her way out of a wet bag. Stop it. You are making it harder. You are propagating things that endanger children. You. And guess what? It's not, it's not the, the lefties. It's not the, the, it's not the people in your YouTube comments that organizations have called out. It's people like you. You. You are literally the people that this letter is talking about. Can we have the linky? Yes, you may. I'm going to post this in chat so everybody can go look at it themselves. I'm going to post it here. Nobody can fucking ignore this. It's going to be in the, in the description. Everybody can go take a look at this themselves. And by the way, if it seems like I'm being a little annoying with this letter, it's because I am. Because I actually fucking care. Because unlike Shoe on Head, who just wants to capitalize on a little invented oops, a little oopserino invented conspiracy and make a lot of money on your Patreon, I really want people to stop being abused. And I really, really want people like you, blood on hands, to stop fucking making shit up. People who are constantly calling everything and anything to do with pe Celia, like gay shit, LGBT shit. Yes, I get it. I have a bi flag in the background of some of my videos and I get comments like nice groomer flag, like. Then you should know, then you are even worse. Then you are looking at it and ignoring it because it's convenient to you. I get it, but how long no, should No, you don't. You should get it, but you don't. You ignore it. You should see it. You should get it not say anything in fear of giving them ammo because this was probably the most oh here we go real quick hold on i just wanted to oh i wish we had it just a second ago shoe on head said i make videos for adults here we go i think i've said this before but i've been to my own fan meetups i know what 14 year old girls and boys are like your babies your fetuses I will protect you from the pedos. So one of the things people kind of jokingly bring up often is like, oh, some of these women are so attractive. Hmm. Hmm. Remember just a minute ago, Shoe on Head was saying, my show is for adults. Well, when nobody was looking in the past, looks like she went to some meetups with a bunch of her kids. With a bunch of, a bunch of kids from her audience. Not her kids. Kids from her audience. Weird. Interesting how the facts just sort of shift whenever it's convenient for shoe on head. Most clear cut example of something weird and gross, completely unrelated to gay people. And these people still did damage control for it. If any- No one did damage control for anything. People pointed out that you made up a lie. You're the one who's fixated. You and your audience are the ones who fixated on LGBT people. The rest of us, in fact, interestingly, if you go watch my original video, the first seven minutes of the video is me not talking about LGBT people, not talking about uh, shoe on head being a Nazi, but explicitly bringing up that conspiracies like this harm victims that they get in the way of actually helping people who've been abused. You can go watch it for yourself. I'm not fucking lying to you. It must be refreshing to not be lied to for once. Anything would ever give the right ammo. It's the way you acted so quickly to defend this shit. And yes, by implying I can't talk about it or I'm uh, committing scholastic terrorism or whatever the f the new buzzword is, that is defending this. This shit that anyone with eyes can see is creepy. I have been talking about this stuff all- she did it again. We almost need a counter for this. She did it again. Now it's creepy. Now when she's talking about something specific, it's creepy. Before it was pedophilia, before it was a pedophile conspiracy, before that it was pedo baiting, now it's just creepy. All of my career. And I have a great track record. I was talking about maps years ago, and now there's hired academics using the term. I warned about Amos Yee, who said I was too mean to pet. 
files, and he was arrested for having CP. I exposed prostate. Amos Yi was an open pedophile. You didn't do anything. Everybody on the entire planet knew that Amos Yi was a fucking pedophile. He openly talked about it. What are you fucking talking about? That's like saying you're, you're Sherlock Holmes because you looked to the side of the room and there was a wall. Wow, I discovered the wall, everybody. Easier than they shut down the- this is, this is Shu just jerking herself off. Their forum so young maps could no longer enter it. I helped get the word out about this Balenciaga thing and even the brand itself. Which is fraudulent. Which is fucking fraudulent. You fucking idiot. You haven't proven shit. Self had to admit it was creepy and is now doing an investigation. Creepy. Creepy! She did it again! into it. I don't care if you yourself don't want to talk about this stuff. I don't care. You do you, I will do me. But all I ask is that you stay out of my way when I am doing me. And just know that I am not sorry. I did nothing wrong, and I will do it again. Goodbye. So it wasn't accidental, right? So when you said in the beginning that you accidentally created it, that was a lie. Right, Shu? Your, your definitive statement at the end of this is that you have no regrets, that you will do it again, that it was intentional. Well, that's the end of the video, folks. What, a, what an ending. Let's just wrap that back around. Let's play the ending one more time. I really want to play that ending one more time. Doing me. And just know that I am not sorry. I did nothing wrong, and I will do it again. Just know that I am not sorry, I did nothing wrong, and I will do it again. Know that I am not sorry, I did nothing wrong, and I will do it again. Know that I am not sorry, I did nothing wrong, and I will do it again. Know that I am not sorry, I did nothing wrong, and I will do it again. If you call- what she's saying, if you call me out when I'm wrong, when I lie and accuse people of crimes that they didn't commit, when I get my audience to have a moral crusade that by her own admission resulted in damage and defacement of, of buildings where no children were abused, which cost the job and p potentially the entire future career of an artist who she's not even sure what they actually did, they might have just randomly put a piece of paper in there. That's what she's saying, right? That's, she said, oh, I'm not sorry for that. I'll do it again. And also, this right here, what you just witnessed, what you just fucking witnessed was her admitting that she lied to your fucking face. All of you shoe fans, you were lied to. The beginning when she said I accidentally started this thing, what did she say? Not sorry, I did nothing wrong, and I will do it again. Interesting. What you have now witnessed what you witnessed, thanks to Demon Mama, is a frame by fucking frame disassembly of this lying freak's campaign of misinformation. The entire video was designed to get you to stop asking any questions about the bullshit that she spews, the shit that she shovels into your trough. And this is mostly directed at shoe on head fans. She wanted you to stop asking. She makes a threat. Get out of the way when I do my shit. And what she means by her shit is lying, making shit up, accusing people of crimes. And interestingly, let's not recall, let, let's, let's not forget, I should say, that in this very video, in her seg segment titled Useful Idiots for Pedophiles, that's, that's what the useful idiots who the, pe who the people are being useful for in her video, which she says, she included my face. Even though she didn't even watch my video, apparently. She didn't even put anything up that I said that could even be construed as defending pedophilia. But it's interesting that Shoe on Head would try to frame me for pedophilia when she just fucking gaslit you for hours. Shoe on Head is a has-been. Shuan Head is a manipulative, 
lazy propagandist whose video style has not evolved since 2016. She sits on a pile of 1.9 million subs and blathers about moral, uh, moral panics with no evidence whatsoever. Her videos encourage you to turn off your brain, to not ask any questions, and to consider anyone who disagrees with her a pedophile. There's a reason that I keep saying blood on hands. Now, if you've been watching this and it feels like a bit of a revelation for you and you're ready to fucking find a streamer that has a fucking spine, to find a streamer who actually tells the truth, to find a streamer who does actually Embrace an evidence-based approach to helping people. A streamer who has new style. A streamer who's always fucking innovating. That's me. That's Demon Mama. You're fucking tired of getting lied to? If you're fucking tired of getting, of, of getting blasted with a lazy echo chamber of fucking has-been bullshit... If you're tired of being told that you should be angry about random fucking, uh, uh, random fucking clothing lines in a world in which child abuse is rampant, just not in the way that Shoe on Head likes to share it, and everyone who has any sort of meaningful experience with fighting child abuse agrees, it's fucking time. Press that motherfucking subscribe button and smash that motherfucking like button. And in fact, you know what? It's the least you can do. The least that Shoe on Head's fucking shithole community can do is come on over and make it up to me for their stupid fucking entertainer framing me for bullshit. Lying about me and my friends, implying that me and my friends and my colleagues are fucking groomers and pedophiles with no fucking evidence because she's too busy fucking tying red lines all over the place. That's fucking bullshit. And everyone who calls that out is right to call it out. No, you do not actually have to jump on board with a bunch of bullshit false allegations. You do not have to fucking listen to this pathetic professional victim fill your ears with bullshit as she shoves your face in her fucking lies. Weird because Shu has talked about kink and BDSM in her videos before. She's a hypocrite. I could be wearing a full BDSM harness right now. I could be wearing a full gimp suit, but it would not matter because my content is not made for children. I am an adult who makes content for adults. You either have a room temperature IQ or you're coping. I think I've said this before, but I've been to my own fan meetups. I know what 14 year old girls and boys are like. Your babies, your fetuses. I will protect you from the pedos.